Good morning, campers. I got a mouthful of lucky charms, and Andre can barely speak. And uh, nobody else has shown up yet, but we're doing all right. How are you guys doing? Yeah, I believe this is what you call Wednesday. Hump day. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, Tom, how are you? Doing okay. Um, hanging in there. <laughs> As I said, I had a mouthful of lucky charms, so I guess there's things could be worse. Yeah, uh, I got a slice of apple here. I'm gonna try and be healthy. Got to counterbalance the uh, lucky charms, you know. Yeah. To wash down the soda here. With. Try to counterbalance like that. Uh, that uh, I have kids in school in kindergarten where there's loads and loads of like seasonal viruses. So, so you're so, drinking yeah. tea just to counteract the fact that I'm eating like a ten year old. Yeah, exactly. And that way we, <laughs> we six year old even <laughs> out to middle age, I guess. So then we'll be fine. <laughs> Lindsay says that's one of her favorite cereals. There you go. And uh, Natasha says, hit that like button, reminding us all we have to hit the like button. Film Lars is here. We got David Finn. We got D-Bud Martin. Thank you for being here this morning. We got Mi Mr. Ninja Bear. We have that 70s rock fan. Kenny Long's here. Rory Mitchell, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you're doing well. How are you doing, Andre, besides your voice being a little hoarse? Oh, apart from that, I'm good. But from that, all is well. Glad to hear it. We had a Spider-Man trailer. We did. Uh, we had the Spider-Man trailer drop. We, of course, have some Star Wars news that we weren't able to properly discuss on Monday, so we can do a little bit more of that today. And then you know what comes on Friday. Star Trek Discovery. Nobody. That cares. is indeed correct, at least to you guys in the U.S. and in Canada. No one else will get to see it. And uh, if you've been watching, Midnight unless you have Edge, Paramount Plus, anyway. Yeah, and you only have Paramount Plus in uh, in uh, North America, uh, or sorry, in the U.S. Meaning, no one else in the world gets to see it. And it's kind of funny. Like we've been saying for years now, haven't we? That Netflix wants to get out of that deal. Seems they uh, got their way. Well, um, I thought they had uh, Paramount Plus in a few more regions. Not that I'm aware. I don't think so. I don't know how many places in the world have Paramount Plus. And I know they're many. also buying not up. as many as Netflix. I'll tell you that. And I know they're also looking into buying up the Stars streaming network. Yeah, well, that's not going to help the fans that were used to seeing Star Trek Discovery on Netflix and who are looking for and who were looking forward to season four. Uh, this Friday. Can't imagine there are many of them, but that's not going to help them. There was one guy. Yeah, I heard that, in Nova that Scotia. One, that and, one uh, guy, he's going to have to take to the high seas now. There was uh, maybe a couple people in Germany, and that's about it. I don't think there's any more. I don't think there's too many people missing the series. No. Uh, but yeah, we we have a super chat. The one you just brought up on screen yep. was a no, comment on the Spider Man trailer. <laughs> and uh, I accidentally we'll, took it down. Yeah, we'll bring it back up again since we I'm it. trying. <laughs> I got to get back to it. <laughs> uh, thankfully, they keep all the messages now, but it's, uh, it's you got to truck through them. Yeah. Night King 01 sends in a 499 super chat. It says, Speaking of the Spider Man, in the Brazilian trailer, you can see the lizard getting punched by nothing in the final shot. Confirmed Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that last night. Um, yeah, Andre actually brought we brought this up uh, on what was it Monday? Or, yeah, no, it was on no, it was on uh, Culture's channel yesterday. Yes, it was. That's true. It was. Uh, yeah, no, that was the two of you. Then I wasn't there. Oh well, then why was it? Was it Monday? Where was it? Where was it that we were on Monday? What was remember. that? Was it cult? No, it wasn't Culture. I could have swore it wasn't in the morning show, but. No, it wasn't. It was later. It was Espanol. It was Midnight ah, yeah. Espanol. Yeah, that was what it was. See, I knew so much shit. We, we spoke about it there. But anyway, Tom, you were saying, and uh, now when we have remembered uh, where we spoke about it, what were we saying? Um, at the there was two different trailers. Yes, we did. And uh, you had heard they were going to drop the one without Toby and Tom. And uh, or Toby and Andrew, excuse me. And uh, I uh, had heard there was another one with them, but uh, I wasn't really surprised 
when that was the one that they dropped because that leaves them one more trailer. Plus, it doesn't steal all the thunder from Ghostbusters. Um, and I feel like, you know, that there must have been some kind of push and pull with Disney and Sony on this whole thing. Because they even got the poster out early when it was supposed to not come out till Monday last week. And I think it was just a kind of distract from Eternal's bad box office. Probably. I mean, Marvel would be desperate to try to get attention away from that. Uh, which, of course, Sony doesn't care too much about. There you have some rife room for for some internal squabbles. But, um, but yeah, they appear to have reached a compromise. Uh, but speaking of Midnight's Edge Espanol, where we first had the, this discussion, we have our first guest of the day from there. Welcome, Diego of Midnight's Edge Espanol. ¿Qué tal? Todo bien, gracias. How are you guys doing? We are well, thank you. Thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco, seis. Oh, I thought I was saying good morning. Never mind. I'm kidding, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, really. Welcome, Diego. How you doing, man? Fine. How about you, Tom? Doing the best I, saw, I can. <laughs> exactly. I, I saw uh, I saw me yesterday. I was like, mm, how will Tom react? To the Spider-Man so, trailer or which one? Yeah, Spider-Man, because clearly there's something's missing from that. Uh-huh. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that trailer momentarily here. Uh, but first, we have a few super chats to run through, and we have to greet the audience because we have quite a decent audience uh, audience here. Uh, Double back again, says for $5. I knew KK was re-upped when she appeared on the Boba Fett documentary instead of Favreau. Yeah, of course, stealing credit any chance she gets. We'll get into that. And before that, we have... Mm, saying hi Jen Solo everyone and um, Callum Lyle says for five Australian dollars KK perhaps has a trophy case filled with all the part of all the men she's cut and she uses Ryan Johnson as a chair mm, yeah well uh, there may be something to that and uh, Callum Lyle clarifies parts between the legs I meant yeah I think we all caught what your meaning there so yeah uh, and uh, then we have deleted scenes who says, Hail Andre, Tom Wrenches, and chat. On a break from work, hope everyone is safe and healthy. And yeah, I'm healthy apart from my voice breaking up, so I'll have some more tea here. Uh, but before then, we also have Darius Minchhausen who sent us a super yeah. sticker, so thanks so much for that. And uh, are we just about caught up then? So we can start talking um, about the Spider-Man trailer. I think we are caught up. Let's see if there's any more right. earlier portions. Uh, looks like we're good. Okay. All right. Diego, so, why don't you uh, start us off then? What did you feel about the Spider-Man uh, No Way Home trailer? Um, at the beginning, I was a bit in the hype, right? Because I say, okay, we might see the, you know, the other two Spider-Men, especially Toby. Toby! But the moment I only see Tom Holland and clearly they took out things, I was like, I feel completely unsatisfied with this conclusion. That's my feeling at the end of it. I was like, why? Where is it? I'm biting at the charm. I want to see something. And it's like, you're seriously annoying me now. That's pretty much my feelings right now with the trailer. Yeah, that was a nice summary. How about you, Tom? Um, I pretty much got most of what I expected. Uh, I, I'm not surprised they kind of highlighted the villains more this time around. Uh, I, I like that we got a little bit more into the story. Uh, I kind of like the whole catch of it all being villains that were killed by Spider-Man in an alternate universe. So they can do something with that. Uh, I can see where it's going to be a lot darker, like uh, we had been talking about, Andre. Um, I didn't hate the trailer, but I'm still kind of... I'm curious on how I'm going to feel about the movie, because I, I wasn't a huge fan of the last film. I didn't hate it, but I wasn't. I didn't like it as much as Homecoming. Uh, so hopefully this one's better. And, you know, just lately with the whole thing with Marvel, it was just, you know, kind of a half half ready to walk out the door as it is so like 
this is the only thing that's really kind of keeping me interested. Yeah, and for me, it's like it's it's Spider Man, it's Doctor Strange, it's Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's it. And after the Doctor Strange reshoots and what we've been hearing about this movie, it's Guardians of the Galaxy I'm looking forward to at this point. I got to be honest, when I heard how incredibly dark and oppressive and learned some story spoilers of uh, No Way Home, my excitement just it just fell, sank into the rock bottom abyss possible like in the Mariana Trench. And um, this trailer, it only confirmed to me that everything that I have heard about the movie is probably accurate. Mm -hmm. Which, um, which, yeah, um, which is boring. Uh, which, which sucks. I, I hope that, I hope that the movie is going to be great. I really, really do. I hope that what I heard is just like some people's interpretation. But I, I'm not too excited at this point. Uh, I, I really am not. Uh, what I basically I've heard is that it's all dark, all dreary, and things that should be fun aren't. That's kind of like what I've heard. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was all right. I mean, also, there's something. Um, I was actually watching, like, the one they were doing the event, and somebody was actually streaming it on Instagram, the whole event before the trailer came out for that theater. And what was interesting is how Tom Holland said this is the culmination of his Spider-Man. Usually when you say that, that means that from there, really, he's more... It's like, this is the end of the story, arc, basically. And, and, and it lets a little bit more of what this could mean for Spider-Man in the MCU. Well, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to try and tread lightly. Let's just say there will be some big changes after this movie. Um mm -hmm. And I've been hinting at that for a while just simply because of the new deal. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm not exactly going to be... I, I have a feeling that these changes and how things are kind of left hanging, it'll really kind of divide the audience p potentially. And I think it's going to be interesting in how it sets up Doctor Strange. But I'm more worried now just because of all this stuff we're hearing about major rewrites behind the scenes on Doctor Strange and all these reshoots and stuff. So, I mean, I'm kind of just like, okay, is that good news or bad news? Because it could be one of two things. It could just be there, you know, it just wasn't working and they had to do, fix some things. You know, it could be just a ripple effect of everything. But then again, we're seeing all these projects across the board all being delayed and all for the same reasons. So did Chapek take one look at and go, you got to fix this? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's very possible considering the type of situation we're seeing here. Uh, okay. so that does have me kind of more worried than anything. Um, as far as Spider-Man in the MCU though, I don't think we're, we're done seeing Spider-Man anytime soon. Uh, Tom is saying that because his contract is up, but he's mm -hmm. been hinting at those kind of things for a while, but at the same time, he loves playing this character. So I think it's more of a contract ploy. What do you think, Andre? I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. <clears throat> Because um, it really would suck if they had like decided that we're going to bring in another more uh, diverse and more with the time Spider-Man from the multiverse. I wouldn't put it past them to do that. But I do feel that, that Tom yeah. Holland, yeah, but I do feel that Tom Holland, he's like the he's the best Peter Parker we've had to date almost. Uh, he he hasn't been in the best Spider-Man movies. But he's the best Peter Parker, and I would love to see him hang in there for, for the long, long run. Pun intended. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that, I think, was the intention at some point. So I hope that haven't changed. I mean, if that has changed, I, yeah, then I just throw my hands up in the air in despair, even more than I already have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've heard a lot of similar things. So I, just so people know, like, as far as like how Andre's reacting to some of this stuff, I think it's more of a personal thing. Because like me, oh I'm yeah, to be sure, to be sure. I like I'm not saying that I've heard that the stuff is bad stuff like that. It's just that what I have heard is things that I personally don't like. It's what me individually don't yeah. want to see in a Spider-Man movie. Because I've movie heard can be the best movie ever, and I do hope that I will come out of the theater saying, "Whoa, were all my fears unfounded." Like, there hasn't been, like, any test screenings or something 
where we heard like, whoa, this is a dumpster fire. No, far from it. This is just no. a, we've but, heard of some things that are going to be in it. And, and it could be the, the trailers, execution yeah. is amazing. But uh, but just based on how those things were presented, I didn't like them being there. Well, let mm -hmm. me preface this by saying, like, basically, we had heard similar things before the trailers dropped. And things in the trailers are being confirmed, or the things that we had heard are kind of being confirmed by things we're seeing in the trailer, at least appear to be that way. So we're going off of, again, speculatory things, but let's just say for the sake of argument, we may know people in the know who have who know stuff about the movie. Reactionary to the things that we've heard, I got more excited about the film. Andre went the opposite direction. Exactly. So you see, that's a completely an individual take. Because there we are reacting to the, sum, uh, the same information that makes you more excited and it makes me less excited. Case in point, like for instance, yeah. when the director of uh, Planet of the Apes, movies that you really like, was Matt announced Reeves, for, yeah. for Batman, Matt Reeves. You were excited. I was like, oh, fuck, not that guy. No, it's almost reversed because like, I'm not looking forward to the movie until the very, very least at all. And you're kind of like, eh. <laughs> but no, like, and, and that's why I think the movie is going to be a little bit more divisive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the end, because of how it's going to probably end up and lead into things going forward. And um, I think now it's safe to say from what we saw in that trailer last night that, yes, kids, they're setting up like a si Sinister Six thing, probably. That's been one of the rumors again. They're really trying to dust off that Sinister Six project. I don't know why they're so desperate for Sinister Six. I mean, who the hell has told them that the fans are desperate for Sinister Six? I've never I don't told know. Them that. Ta Have you told them that? I don't know. That was one of the. Where the hell did they get like, like, This is like, this is like the same thing with like the producers making a Punisher movie uh, and the Punisher series on Netflix. I think they have it in their mind that people want Jigsaw so badly. The hell is wrong with them? <laughs> yeah, fine. You have like ten people who wants that, but, but the other hundred thousand fans, they you don't. You know, though, Andre, it makes more sense now than it did whatever it was five years ago when they first tried to do it, because at least now, like I said the other day, now you have it set up to where you set up the Sinister Six. You can actually have a buddy team up movie now between Venom and Spider Man, that that you can mm -hmm. kind of get things worked together now. And this is true. This them. is true. You now have like more material to make it something more worthwhile. But but they were so desperate for it. Then I I blame Alex Kurtzman uh, because he was one of those that was like in charge of setting up their amazing Spider-Man cinematic universe. Uh, the one that was kickstarted with the amazing Spider-Man two. You also how well that went. That whole movie was all about setting up the Sinister Six, and. Uh, Thank God we never got that because that would have been freaking awful. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, what if they want to do the whole Sinister Six, not only to give that kind of material, but because maybe they they assume they're going to have to negotiate Toby, uh, Tom Holland's contract, right? And so they already have a project on the works in the Spider-Man universe while they're negotiating with Tom Holland. It could also be that the contract already has been finished, negotiated, but they know that it's public knowledge that his contract expires. I mean, that's like a great opportunity to play like some uh, some like games with the fans. Like, oh, will we renew? Won't we? Is this the last Honestly, time we'll see him? Is it? For all we know, that contract could have been renewed months ago. We just mm -hmm. haven't heard. You could be right, Andre, but at the same time, I'm thinking that they're not even going to mess with his contract until after Doctor, Doctor Strange is complete. Uh, and with all the things getting delayed and everything happening the way it is, I think it's kind of just something that's more on the back burner at the moment. I could be totally wrong. You could be totally right. Because I feel like this whole this whole thing of, oh, Tom Holland's leaking things again. Ha, 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 snicker, snicker. I think the whole thing's been an act from the very, very start. I mean, I know they're definitely playing into it now. But I think the whole thing's been, like you're right, I think it's been a, a publicity ploy from the start. And that's how they've kind of worked this whole thing. And it, it works for the campaign, but like as far as like the whole thing goes, as far as what actors are going to be sticking around, he's like the only one that I think is safe. Like after the things we've heard and with the new deal and everything and considering how they're probably going to try and get rid of a lot of other people who cost a lot more money, hint, hint. Let's just say that after this movie's said and done, I was warning people, don't get attached to too many people. And at the same time, I think some people are going to be happy who don't like a lot of these versions of these characters, 
but it's going to leave a lot of people confused because I'm still confused as to where they're going with this, especially after WandaVision. Because that whole like fucking bait and switch bullshit on WandaVision really has me leery now. Um, and I'm with a lot of people on the whole thing with the whole Doctor Strange and acting right. I think it's like Mephisto or somebody else acting like Doctor Strange doing this whole thing. Um, but I could be fucking wrong there too. Like, I, I like that I'm not 100% sure where this is all going, even though you and I probably know a lot more leaks than some people do. But like, Again, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm not 100% sure where they're going with this, and now that they're rewriting a bunch of shit, anything that we've heard in the last few months is probably null and void now, so who knows? That, that's exactly the thing. That's a part of the reason why we haven't like run with anything, because we know it's all subject to change. Very fluid, and yes. And not all that reliable. Mm-hmm. Well, and we're not- in uncharted territory, because... A lot of where we're at now is the 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 ripple effect of things from two three years ago, right? Like we're in a completely different domain than what they had originally planned on being in with the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play this out. Um, Rod Thunderheart sends us in a super sticker. Let me see if I can see what it is here. Uh, I think it was a fist bump, but I can't bring it up here now. On the other end. No, that one was PJ's coming up. I can't see what you sent me, Rod Thunderheart, but thank you so much for the $3 super sticker. I'm sure it was fun. Uh, that's one thing StreamYards really needs to fix. Uh, then we got so, Arch- like all of you, you can see it, but we can't. Yeah, Archangel says, as long as Kathleen Kennedy remains with Lucasfilm and Disney, I'll continue to deny them money, even on titles I actually want to see. That's uh, That's a fair... You know, I'm a fair way to look at things, Archangel. I'm kind of in the same boat at this point. In the last few months, the more and more it sounded like Kennedy wasn't going anywhere, the less enthused I've gotten, if you guys haven't noticed, about Star Wars going forward. And, uh, yeah, as you noticed two months ago, we were the ones who broke Mikey Sutton's scoop that she was going to get renewed. So It's actually yeah. close to three months ago. Yeah, yeah. August 21st. Yeah. So there you go on that one. Then we got Jim Watari who says, Andre needs to say my name as Vatari. Oh, go ahead. Um, Vatari. Jim Vatari. Okay. Is that right? I hope so. I yeah, hope so it, does, it is like a V sound like I was wrong. Yeah. Uh, Dash Attack says, is it possible Tom Hardy Venom is the sixth villain? Absolutely. It is well very, within very the realm possible. Of possibility. Yeah. I mean, uh, from what we have heard, the um this movie may even set something uh, akin to that up. Well, here's my other thing I'm going to tell you. One of these villains is probably not going to make it out of this. I don't know for sure which one. I have no insight on that whatsoever. I'm going to take a wild guess, though, and say it's Alfred Molina. Uh, I have a feeling that they're going to have another completely different villain we don't know about yet. And no, I don't think Venom is going to be the sixth villain. I think he's going to end up teaming up with Spider-Man. Uh, I could be completely fucking wrong, though, because things are so goddamn fluid at this moment that I have no idea what's going on. Uh, I knew a few things before, but now I'm just like, fuck all that noise and chucked it out I the mean, window. Also, Venom, they could use him as the, one of the original Sinister Six. You know, just bring him like that, just so they introduce him to the world, right? To the MCU. And then as have a him switch of, sides eventually. Exactly. Exa- like Venom did in the, in the comics, where he was basically after he became Venom. He started hunting down Spider Man because he wanted to get him, you know? And then sort of this weird relationship starts building in the comics where they're sort of become frenemies, you yeah. know? And I think maybe that's they're going to use this as a, as a starting point. But I also agree that Alfred Molina is the, is the only one I feel that would be, if you're going to kill somebody, you're going to kill him because Doc Ock is the only one that shows actually have some kind of compassion. Morality. And, yeah, yeah, morality. So yeah. He, he, he at one point could be like, you know, saying, maybe die, I don't know, saving Tom Holland. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, I think you're on the money there. And uh, the same thing with the whole Venom thing. That's what I was thinking. Like, that's a your whole, what you just said is exactly kind of what I've been thinking this whole time. And again, Dash Attack, we're just speculating here. We have very little to go off of. I don't want to spoil anything else that I know of any other heroes or villains that might pop in um, because there is a lot of noise going on right now. And Lord knows that Certain uh, other YouTubers like John Campia have not been doing a very good job at not spoiling this movie at all, regardless of how much Andre and I have known about this movie. We have at least tried not to 
to spoil it for anybody. But some people have just gone out of their way for some dumb fucking reason uh, <laughs> and done that. And uh, I'm not so sure it was uh, pressure at all because I think he's going to get in trouble <laughs> from what I've been hearing. But I don't know for sure. Uh, we'll see on that. Um, and then we also had a super sticker from uh, PJ, as I pointed out before, with the fist bump. Thank you so much for that, PJ. Uh, hope you're doing well, my friend. Then we had another one from Rod Thunderheart who says, Hail Andre, hail Tom. I hope to see Doc Op rip off spider legs off Iron Spider outfit. I can see him being angry about that. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I doubt it, though. Uh, how did everybody feel about the new suit? I'm not, uh, not as keen on it. I hate it. Uh, uh it I hated me. it in the comics, and I hate it here. <laughs> I was going to say, it reminds me of that series of Spider-Man 2000-something, from the animated series. It, I don't know why I saw it. And it's like, why does it look that it only needs that cape that it had, and that's it? That's that series. I just... Yeah, I get what right. you're saying. Yeah, it looks... Uh, I, I'm more of a fan of the red and blue. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, um, it, it, it's more than anything. It doesn't feel right with the characterization of in the MCU, even. It, it it feels like an add-on, you know. Well, to be honest, the first version of it I saw, I wasn't, I didn't think it was too bad. I didn't mind the black outfit with the gold gold trim instead of silver, like they did in the third one. Mm -hmm. But then now that I'm seeing it with all the do, the doodads for the the basically the Doctor Strange type of stuff that's all over it, mm -hmm. I was like, eh, that kind of looks wonky. But they fixed Electro. Yes, I know <laughs> did you see that, Andre. Did you notice that? Uh, I did. I was like thinking, oh my god! Well, uh, the actor deserved it because he yeah. was humiliated so badly in that the, the, his movie Amazing Spider-Man Two. Yeah, it was well, a, it was to painful to watch. Painful to watch with yes. him, like having his own birthday party and pretending Spider-Man was there talking to him like imaginary friend. Oh my God, I was. Well, painful. I didn't. Mind, it wouldn't be such a bad thing, Andre, if we hadn't had this character twelve times already. Yeah, with Jim Carrey, and then they kind of did the same damn thing with Poison Ivy and Batman and Robin. So even there, you've already had these two characters. Uh, you had a similar kind of character already with, you know, the, the Eddie. But that's Brock what Alex Kurtzman and... does, and he was right behind that. He ripped uh, things off again. So yeah, good going. So thank God an opportunity to correct. And also before my vo voice breaks up completely, just have to give a tribute to Mark Lines. Who says he finally caught Midnight's Edge in the Morning live? I'm glad to Thank hear you it. all for the great content, and hopefully, they'll open up super chats and super stickers from Thailand soon. Oh, well, that's Thailand, huh? That's awesome. Well, we actually have somebody listening from Thailand. That's amazing. Uh, Carlos Batista says, I just don't want Toby to die. Um, don't get attached to anybody. I don't know if he'll continue on or not. Um, I want to believe that they didn't bring all these people back to not let Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire work, work together again. Because I said that right away, Andre. Remember yeah, you that? did. You did. Like, yeah, I'm, let's hope that that was like a prophetic moment because it would be pretty sweet to have. Uh, because uh, you all know Sam Raimi is the one director doc directing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And we that do would know be that... brilliant to have him uh, bring uh, bring um, and Toby Maguire back for that. So, fingers crossed. I don't want Toby to die either. And I mean, it could be that they're really holding back on a lot of the fact that they're in this movie because maybe they're not in the movie all that much. Maybe they don't show up till the end, and that's going to lead into Doctor Strange. Because I mean, we Spoiler all know alert. this leads directly into Doctor Strange. I don't know that. I'm saying that this is complete speculatory. Uh, that that meant that. that and again, this is more going off of the trailer I saw yet last night than anything. Uh, because going we did bring it up, but like there's that big shot, that big epic shot where it's just Tom Holland going up against all those villains, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Lizard gets punched by air. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, come on, this is not the first time they've done this to us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what that's all about? You know what I think. I think that was either Toby Maguire Spider Man or Andrew Garfield Spider Man, I and they just it. removed that layer from the trailer and hoped that no one would notice. Mm -hmm. uh, when really they shouldn't have brought in that shot at all. 
Well, mm-hmm. I have to watch them back to back. I think because Gary was the one I saw from Nerd Roddick that pointed it out first, even though some people were talking about it, he actually posted the video. I think the U.S. one cuts just before that punch. Yes, the Brazil yeah. one is the one, and the Sony Brazil one is the one that people use because that one you see the full shot and you see the moment where Lizard, his head is going forward and then out of nowhere, it's going to the left. Yeah, he just goes kvunk. And here's the thing is like, because people were posting the picture from the U.S. one and saying he's looking at something, he's looking at something that's not there. And then it was Gary who I saw actually posted the Brazilian trailer clip where you actually see Lizard get whomped. Mm-hmm. by air like he's uh, just out of nowhere <laughs> uh, and, and also some people have been talking for example there's a scene where uh tom holland spider-man is going to go and save zendaya from falling right but if you see the scene the moment their hands the he clearly not going to reach her before uh the kimono has to stop so some people are saying that's where andrew garfield's spider-man is going to come in sort maybe. of as a as a callback to the fact how he failed to save uh gwen stacy maybe then again, she's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she is, especially after Dune. Uh, Monkey Not Trunk says, uh, I gave up on the MCU after Civil War. Oh, wow, you gave up a way back. But I am yeah. tempted to see No Way Home for nostalgia. I'm just not, I'm just worried I'll, it'll collapse under its own weight. Um, the only problem a possible that, concern, Monkey, mm-hmm. is you have to at least see a couple of the Spider-Man. You have to see the other Spider-Man movie and a couple of. Oh, the I'm sure movies. he's seen those. I mean, those are like older movies now. Well, he said Civil War is where he checked out. So uh, if he hasn't seen like Infinity War and stuff like that, there's a lot of stuff you got to kind of see that sets up, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the Spider-Man stuff. Um, I loved Homecoming. I didn't. I didn't dislike it at all. In fact, I don't think a lot of people's gripes are warranted. Now, the second film, I understand. Uh, not to get into too much since you haven't seen them, but. A lot of people's gripes, I feel, with the second film. The first film, I don't get because it's like uh, he kind of goes against a lot of people's arguments, so it doesn't really work that way. And Michael Keaton just fucking kills that character. Like, it's amazing. He's probably one of the best villains in the MCU to this point. Um, But you're you're not wrong. That's where I'm kind of getting concerned, too, is like this whole thing, not just, you know, Spider Man, but. The entire thing, like you're saying, is collapsing under its own weight at this point. Uh, uh, and, and trying to reintroduce all these new characters that don't really have any history mm-hmm. is the bigger problem. I think the best analogy is here in the video game industry, when the hype train starts for certain games and then the game comes out. And it's not a bad game. It's just, you know, the hype was greater than what the game could meet a match at, and release. So the game at the end is hated just because the hype was too much for it. I think that would be the best example in this case. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Uh, then we've got Just Nova who says, I think Kevin and Disney aren't using comics and want to add their own twisted stories, which is hilariously removing the villain concept or good versus bad. Um, I don't think you're totally wrong with this Just Nova now. I don't know if I can agree with this wholeheartedly, but there is this sim. This the, I cannot disagree with you that there is this problem with the MCU with having just bad guys, like just good bad guys, and I don't mean like uh, good bad guys, like, but I mean like bad guys that are actual bad guys. There's always something that makes them some kind of tragic villain, and it's getting sickening. Like we we really have not had any had any villains that don't have any kind of like hang up on them that make them uh, relatable in some way, and I think that's a bigger that speaks more to people's politics. I don't know if Andre knows what I'm getting at here, but like uh, I think a lot of these people that are working on these movies tend to relate with a lot more of the misfits and the the bad guys, so they're trying to make them more relatable, but they suck at doing it in some cases, and in other cases, it just kind of ruins the characters. Because sometimes you just got to have a good bad guy. Also, like it depends a lot on the mandate from from the studio. There's like for that instance, problem too. Uh, with the Marvel movies, uh, the lack of good villains is actually Kevin Feige's fault, uh, because he has said, and I understand it completely, because what he has said is that they are all about making the hero grow and making the hero shine, and the best way to do that is to have a villain that mirrors the hero. So that way, the hero has to overcome his mirror image, thereby bettering himself. Which is why you have like just look at like the 
the the Iron Man movies. Tony Stark always had to fight someone that was kind of like himself. In The Incredible Hulk, Hulk had to fight the Abomination. And similar in all of the uh, the Marvel, certainly the origin movies, they fight someone very similar to themselves. And of course, this doesn't really give way to, to much in the way of like recurring good villains, does it? So arguably, the only two good ones we have in the MCU so far are Loki and Thanos. Are there any others? No, and both of those I wouldn't even consider villains, especially Loki. Um, no, because he kind of like took on a life of his own and became like a hero. But but he started out that way. It was just like an accident that uh, that um, he got to shine a little bit more in the Avengers. And because of that, he uh, they were like, oh, he's so good, we can't get rid of this guy. Yeah. Yeah, and as far as the Sinister Six goes, you know, we got Michael Keaton. He, his character is somewhat bad. I mean, he was kind of... Uh, he's not did, that bad. But they, but he is bad now. As far as most villains go, he's like one of the worst ones in the MCU. I mean, outside of that, um, we need good bad guys. Like, I think Doctor Doom is going to be a good one. Um if they do him right, but yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. well, uh, well, yeah. Let's uh, let's uh, keep our fingers uh, trust that Victoria from Doom will be done. Right. Yeah, right. No, but here's the other problem though: is that Spider-Man arguably has the best Rogues Gallery, and up until recently, they've been off. You know, off. Uh, you know, they couldn't. They had. They couldn't use them really. So we'll see how that goes forward with the new deal, but. Uh, the other problem is you just have villains like we do in like Black Widow and shit like that, which to me are a problem. Or even like, you know, like uh, what's his face that Michael B. Jordan played. You know, they always have some kind of hang up that it's generally the the some some hero's fault that they're the way they are instead of it normally being, you know, the other way around kind of thing. It's like a, it just seems abnormal in the MCU. They've had this really tough they just have not been able to make a bad guy bad. It, I don't know how else to put it. It's really difficult for me to put into words, but <clears throat> I, I know what I'm trying to say. Cause even Thanos, right. They even have him with noble causes and all this bullshit. And they even had to bring back an older version of him to make him more villainous. Right. Like it's. Whereas in the, com in, whereas in the comics, he just wanted to kill half the life universe to, to impress a girl. Exactly. And I brought that point up as a joke before, but I mean, there's sometimes where I understand where people are coming from where that's a better concept than what we wound up with because now you're adding too much bullshit to this and it's taking away from the standard hero versus villain thing and a lot of the heroes are coming off more like villains anymore and it's just, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you're having that problem. Mecca J says uh, Kennedy is having is giving the phrase falling upward a new meaning. Well, again, I keep reminding people that it doesn't matter even if she did have dirt on people she's kathleen kennedy she could probably fuck up a lot more shit before anybody's finally going to take anything away from her and i've been saying that for a while that's why i haven't been too like i haven't had a lot of fucking faith in what's going to happen for star wars i want to be you know excited but i don't know what about you diego uh, uh, being completely honest, after seeing, for example, the Boba Fett trailer, which was the only thing I was excited for, it really just dampened me completely out of Star Wars. I'm like, I'm gonna wait till the series drops and like in full and see what comes out since Rogue Squadron is no longer up. Obi Wan, I don't know, maybe, but still, it's like I will wait till the series is out, like completely, and then watch it. Not before, like I'm not gonna be watching it every week. I'm like not pooped out, but at the same time, I'm not invested in Star Wars. If I if I can express myself correctly, there it's like yeah. simply that. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, and it's just it's 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 Hollywood. These people don't see these individuals the same way we do. I keep reminding everybody that. Uh, Carl Bruce uh, sends in five euros and says, I'm still hoping for a Punisher movie. Please make it rated R, which they won't. Maybe Savage Avengers and or Marvel Conan. 
all the best to you guys. Well, um, let's break well, this down here. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, as for the Punisher, uh, good news. Uh, this has not yet been uh, been official now, uh, officially announced, but uh, you can take it from me. This is happening. John Bernthal is back as the Punisher. It's going to happen. He will be back. Uh, the only question is in exactly what capacity. It, probably it's going to be an MCU Punisher series. The intention is for it to be rated hard R. Personally, I do not believe that until I see it. Or TVMA, as it were, which is the same thing. But I personally don't believe that until I see it. But, but talks have been happening. Talks may, for all we know, already have been closed. So John Bernthal will reprise his role as the Punisher in some capacity. Exactly which capacity? Don't know. Savage Avengers? Who knows what the future might hold. Uh, but Conan won't be in it. Because Marvel don't own Conan. They never did. They only licensed him. They licensed him from the 70s till the 90s. And now they have the comic book license again. But only the comic book license. The live action rights are right now with Netflix. So if there's a Savage Avengers, it's not going to have Conan. There you go. It's not going to have Cool on Goth either. And as far as the but, rated but, R cool, business. But, uh, but I'll just to finish that though, if you've been reading Savage Avengers, Cool on Goth apparently will be the villain of the upcoming Red Sonja movie uh, to be played by Sasha Baron Cohen. It's the latest rumor we've heard. Also, not official. But if that pines out, you heard it here first. Mm -hmm. uh, wait, just a question here. Since we already saw that Charlie Cox most likely, because of the leaks, will be returning as Daredevil and John Barenthal will be, does that mean also if they ever decide to bring Luke Cage and Jessica Jones back, we'll, we'll see the Kristen same Ritter, Kristen Ritter will also be back. I'm not sure about, uh, about um, uh, Power Man. Uh, that I... I cannot say that i think there have been talk, talks i don't know if they panned out the ones i know for sure are charlie cox mm -hmm. kristen ritter and john bernthal those three are a lock mm -hmm. uh, the one that's definitely not coming back is is finn as i invest like that screw that guy that's over with and we'll never be seen again mm -hmm. and blue cage the only time will tell mm. we gotta wait there you go. And as far as the R-rated business, don't get your hopes up right now with anything R-rated when it comes to Marvel. Outside of Daredevil, I don't really see them going that far. But just, just remember, they can get away with a hell of a lot. Basically, the only thing that makes things R-rated is close-up, blood, murder kind of stuff, and F-word and nudity. So if you take those things out of the equation, you can usually get away with quite a bit. Because like that's what I kept hearing about Blade, is that they're going to go as hardcore as they can with PG-13. And really, I mean, I watched the first Blade movie not too long ago, and it's like, watching it, it's like, really, if they take out the F-words and the nudity, you can get away with just about everything else. Because, I mean, it's vampires getting killed most of the time, and a lot of times that's the way they look at it. As long as it's not people getting killed, they don't care. So yeah, look forward to the Punisher Vampire Hunter, just like in Spider-Man the Animated Series. I'm only halfway joking. Oh, God. You know, and uh, yeah, so we'll have to see here. I, I'm, I'm not, when it comes to this stuff, that's why I've kind of been so cynical or whatever, the you know, about a lot of it is just because I just kind of know where, no matter how much we gripe and piss and moan, I'm not so sure there gonna change anything because they they want to piss us off at this point uh spider unlimited says let's all wish a very happy birthday to the master martin scorsese well happy birthday martin scorsese um, indeed happy birthday uh, i'm sure he would be like why are you guys talking about all this stupid comic book shit <laughs> like that's what he would probably say uh but yeah uh, Trot says trailer was the kitchen sink thrown at the screen well Certainly in Brazil, where they couldn't even uh, take out uh, uh, shots where they had removed the Spider-Man. Could very well be. Um, Uncle Remus seems to think the invisible punch is Miles Morales. Well, they sure are shoving Miles Morales in all kinds of places. 
Did you see this, Andre? He's like the new Captain America now. Oh, are you serious? Well, I don't know. The consider, whole story, considering, but... okay, you you now you have radicals and commies as uh, Captain America, so why not? But I'm talking uh, about the com uh, the comics here now. Now here's the thing though with Tom Holland, he might want to make a deal soon because Uncle Remus might could be right here, is, <laughs> especially if the the uh, the uh, court case doesn't go the, the way people want. Uh, Last Millennial says, do you guys think Wanda will be killed in uh, Doctor Strange 2? No. No, she's too much of a strong lamb. And yeah, we should be so lucky. At most, they stop her and she runs away, like last time. Scott. Oh, uh, yeah, they'll stop her and she runs away and they'll talk about, whoa, she made such a huge sacrifice. <laughs> think of the enormous <laughs> sacrifice she did. Freeing all those people, she held slaves. By giving up the figments of her imagination. Yeah. Tough sacrifice. Well, it looks like we have the Kathleen Kennedy in the chat, and she's trying to give away some some uh, spoilers here. Oh. Are you that desperate, Kathy? <laughs> uh, Paulus Plain says, Starlink has in its contract, Starlink will be available for Mars in the future. SpaceX has contracts with NASA and others. SpaceX owes its existence to NASA, Andre. Please don't be so angry with NASA. Like, I've been getting so much of this crap the last couple okay. days yeah. because of you. <laughs> even, even a broken clock can be right twice a day, and that was when when NASA uh, supported uh, SpaceX. And you, you know why have... they had to do that? Because they had botched it so, so badly on their own. I don't know how much money they burned. You burned just thought you just decades. called everybody's fucking grandma a bitch or something the last couple days. The way why, they for insult in NASA? They have it coming. They, they have they have botched this left on the job. They haven't done good enough. I'll say it again. Fire them all. <laughs> it, it, it's like the meme of you had one job and you can't do it. Well, they were rocket scientists. You yeah, exactly. They were. They were. And now they're like they've spent like 15 years trying to reconstruct the Saturn V that they already had. Yeah. Oh Lord. Uh, eh, I get you. I just I think it's funny because I've gotten so much shit over the last few days just because of that business. It's like of all the shit Andre says, <laughs> like, why is it this that's getting all the attention all of a sudden? Just because he well, well that only goes to show that I'm based in the right kind of way. <laughs> uh, HV. See, I'm getting loads of support in the chat right here. Uh, I, I don't know what I'm with you, but Jason I just thought Gray that I. It's hot. it's just funny because like the last Love few days, says Andre is right. F NASA. And again, I've gotten like two or three fucking super chats about it. I've had at least really? a people ask me about it. It's like, yeah, Andre's really kind of hung up on the idea. I get it. I don't disagree with him, but like, yeah, no, why because, the fuck are you know people why? like because, all upset about it's this? Because I, I love the idea of NASA. I love what love what NASA used to be. They did amazing. I mean, no organization on the history of planet Earth has done more amazing things than NASA did as its best. And I can't think of any other organization that has fallen as high or fallen as as steeply as NASA from being someone that went to the moon. Well, like, we, we, uh, yeah, I know, but listen, they went to the moon and the accomplishment of that, like pe people don't fully comprehend what was needed to make that happen. Well, the main and then when they had done that, they went back again. And since then, they were sending some some toys to Mars and some space telescopes. That's all good stuff, but well, it's not enough. I mean, Werner von Braun, he wanted us to go to to Mars in the seventies. We should have had colonies. Well, I don't disagree on the whole with you, solar, Andre. solar system I by mean, now. Here's the problem we have: is like we've gotten to this point where, especially in America, we don't compete anymore. Like that was and that's a problem. Yeah, that's a like, problem because the moment that you settle for being, ah, we're number one, we don't have to do anything, or like, okay, fine, we're number two, but we'll just stay there. The moment you have that attitude, before you know it, you're no longer number one, well, it's you're not no just longer that. number two, you're not even number ten. America is now that kid at the birthday party whose mom told him, "Don't be so cool and 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 all this other shit," because it'll make all the other kids feel bad. Like that's what it feels like anymore. And now we've been doing that for so long. That we don't even know how to be cool anymore, right? Like we don't, like we just said, our own rocket scientists ain't fucking rocket scientists anymore. 
Like they're they, a chimpanzee can probably put it together quicker. It seems like, like that's where we. That, that's actually kind of like the, the the issue because like they already had perfected this in the Saturn V. It perfected probably, everything, yeah. and they've been spending the past 15, 20 years trying to build like the 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 SLS or whatever it's called, which is basically the Saturn V with modern day technology. You yeah. know why? Because it has the exact same lip capacity. You'd think it would be a huge upgrade. No. It's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing run on different technology. And they've been spending 15 years trying to put that thing together. And st they still haven't even gotten to the testing stage of well, even one, not even one prototype. Well, and I think we've had this conversation off air, but like this is why. is because our fucking rocket scientists are so goddamn smart, they can't even figure out how to backwards compat, figure out how to make uh, technology that's backwards compatible so they can actually get to the files and shit they need to get to. That's what I heard is one of the main problems. Is they're so stupid, they don't even know how to get to the shit. Like, they have it all. It's all backed up on ancient fucking software. They can't figure out how to fucking get computers to read. Yep. <laughs> so they got the answers, but they're all kind of, like, hidden. Well, we got the answers. We just can't find them. Uh, you know, that's kind of, that's kind of like... I, I, I have, like, a similar situation, like, here. But I have, like, a few VHS tapes that I really want to c convert. But I haven't got the VHS player to do it. It's, it's kind of like the same thing. Yeah, I have the tape. I have the data. I same just can't here. access it. But unfortunately, like, but, but, yeah. but that's okay because I'm just a dude. Whereas, whereas they're freaking NASA, and th that should well, that's no excuse. That's the problem. Is their their the predecessors built the technology like to do this shit, like <laughs> the computers to do this. Shit. Like none of these guys have done anything. We're, we're in a generation that has done nothing but inherit everything they ever needed, and they've done nothing but fuck it up. That's where I feel like I, I, I that's where I'm at right now. And I don't want to get too deep into this, but because it's not all just one generation's fault. I don't want to make it sound like that, but that's what it feels like at this point. It's like America forgot how to America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. <clears throat> yeah, we also have Script Doctor in the chat, and he, he just points out funding was cut in the 80s when the old data files would have been transferred yes. from yes. tape to floppy and then from floppy to CD-ROM, etc. You see so this there, is what you... happened. Yeah, exactly. So instead of trying to figure out a way to make something bad, you know, these guys are fucking rocket scientists. Yeah. Like they're like I just said, their predecessors invented this shit. And then also here, Big Daddy MRI says they fixed that last November. They got a bunch of hobbyists <laughs> and they cracked the code and gave most of the diagrams. Why for am the I not surprised? Five. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if you're joking or not, but but the but the horror is that that it's that probably sounds, true. That that sounds stupid enough. That is probably true. Well, it's not. It's not uncommon because like a lot of these video games and stuff that we still have. Like we were getting to a point where they were losing a lot of these classic video games because the code and shit was on such old stuff. They couldn't recover it anymore. So yeah, that's why a lot of the video games and stuff that we have nowadays are because of nerds and hobbyists. Who have managed to create emulators and and translate the stuff or however you transcribe what, whatever word it is. Yeah, I mean, you know, actually, there was like uh, one of these companies that makes retro consoles. They actually got in trouble for that because they used like a fan, uh, a fan emulator without the proper authorizations and stuff. <laughs> well, that's kind of where we're at. It's yeah. it's sad, um, but uh, no, I'm not. I, I kind of understand where Andre's coming from. Uh, HVP says, does this movie have too much going on, like Spider-Man 3? Now, this is your fear, Andre. It's funny. It is my fear. This it is, is my fear. exact fear right here. Yeah, the, this just hits on it. I My worry is that this movie is going to be Spider-Man 3 all over again. And just to take you back to the year 2007, I believe it was, when Spider-Man 3 came out. Yes. I was a huge fan of Spider-Man 1. Out of Spider-Man 2. I just, I love them. I have never been more hyped for any movie than I was for Spider-Man 1 leading up to it. I have never been more, almost never been more pleased with the movie than with Spider-Man 2. And I was so, so hyped for Spider-Man 3. I mean, it, it was going to have Venom. And Venom was like my favorite villain from the comics. And finally, we were going to have Venom on the big screen. Yeah, I know he wasn't appropriate with like the beard and stuff like that. 
But who cares? It's going to be Venom. It's going to be awesome. Apart from the fact that they say that Topher Grace is going to play that, that that has to be that has to be a ruse. Like, ain't no way that's happening. This this is a Hayden Church fella who they say is playing Sandman. He he's the perfect Eddie Brock. He's going to be be Venom. Just wait and see. But no. Uh, and, and as it turned out, that was like the least of the problem. It was Sandman that ruined that movie. Uh, and when I came out of it, I was like, not only when it came out, I, I remember like in the audience in the scene where, where Harry is dying and they're crying, Peter and MJ. It's supposed to be this really somber thing. I heard the audience were laughing. I was looking at my watch. Like, is this suffering done soon? And I came out and I said to my friend, because like my fr friend, he was equally excited for the movie as me. And he was like, it, it was pretty okay, apart from this one thing and this thing was a problem. I'm like, no, the movie had one problem. It sucked all of it. That was a problem. Uh, and so I had like no problems admitting that. And it, it tried to do too many things at the same time. It tried to go back and change history. It tried to alter with who killed Uncle Ben. It tried to make the killer, uh, the, the the killer sympathetic to give like Spider Man some kind of lesson in forgiveness and what have you not. And, and the whole thing it just fell flat. It tried to do so much, and an experienced filmmaker like Sam Raimi couldn't do it. I saw that movie once in theaters. I tried rewatching it. I couldn't. To me, it's that bad and that unwatchable. And my worry is that this is going to be the same bloatedness because I know that they're what they're trying to do and they're trying to do more things than Spider-Man 3 tried to do. Maybe they can balance it. Maybe it'll be a great movie. I don't know. But my issue with it is just knowing what they're trying to do and I disagree with the things that they're trying to do and I think it's too much of it. Hence my trepidation for that movie. There you go. Then we also have a special guest joining us this morning. I'm kind of surprised because I wasn't expecting him, but he is the man I want to be like when I grow up, Mr. Chris Gore. Hi, you hey, doing? Chris. Hey, Tom. Hey, Andre. What's happening? What's going on? We also have oh, Diego here. Diego, meet Chris. Chris, Diego. Diego works on our Midnight's Edge Espanol channel. Hey, Diego. Hello. What's up? Uh, fine, thank you. How about you? Great. Yeah, I was uh, just sharing my feelings on why I'm anxious about Spider-Man No Way Home after having ranted about NASA. <laughs> well, I saw the trailer like everybody else, so I'm sure you've discussed it already. Um, I have yeah, but my... let's say I have your thoughts on it. I have my thoughts. I, I think that this is going to be the last Spider-Man movie where they lean into nostalgia because it's the only one they can do it you know no there is there going to be any nostalgia for the tom holland era you know in 10 years are we going to see another a miles morales spider-man movie and tom holland comes back i mean i think we all know what's going to happen in this toby and um andrew garfield are coming back i mean uh, i think it was proven in i was watching ryan cannell had a video this morning where he went over i'm sure you've discussed it where there's yeah we broke it two years ago Oh, really? Okay, yeah. yeah. There's proof. There's a shot in the trailer where there's clearly blank spaces where people should be. Yeah, we talked about that. Yep. Yep. And yeah. The and how, how, the, how the list is punched seemingly by empty air in the Brazilian right. trailer, which can only be from, oh, someone removed that layer of CGI. Yeah, I'm surprised that made it in, but I I'm mean, surprised it, it didn't in the U.S. trailer. It's just a Brazilian trailer, so I guess like I, uh, yeah, it's it's it, it snuck by, but um, but yeah, I'm I'm uh, so I just I'm watching it and going like, why don't I feel more about this? You know, why are my there's something about it that it's just not it's just not connecting with me. I still think it's going to be huge, just because this last wave of Marvel movies has been so weak. And Eternals, like that drop last weekend, I mean, that tells you. And look, I was with a nerdy group of friends this weekend at Designer Con in Anaheim. And I'm talking about like eight of us that all went. And I was the only person who had seen the Eternals. This is a group of friends that like rush out to see every Marvel movie. And they're like, uh, it doesn't look that good. Nothing attracted me to it. So that drop doesn't surprise me. But I think Spider-Man is going to be the standout, right? It's going to be, you know for it's going to be the best superhero of this movie probably not for ridley scott but 
Um, I mean, I think you saw his comment. He's kind of, he's, kind of saw, echoing, uh, yeah. he's echoing a lot of what Scorsese said, and neither, neither of them are wrong. You know, I mean, there's a reason the original Superman movie from 1978 holds up, right? That movie holds up to today, even though the special effects are, you know, lacking in in certain areas. Um, that film holds up there and and there's a reason that the classic these classic films hold up and these other ones are just sort of you know when you're reaching back in nostalgia you're really just sort of dangling a keys in front of the audience and just saying hey look at this look at this so obviously you know toby and andrew are coming back in the end right they're going to be it'll be like end game right with portals here they come to save the day all the spider-men uh, United, so to speak. In fact, Spider-Man United might be a good title for this film. Um, but yeah, I'm not, uh, it's some, something about it's not connecting. I don't know. I, I'm curious, you know, how you guys felt about it more than anything. I'm kind of mixed. We've all been kind of mixed. Andre's been a bit more negative. Uh, I don't know. Diego, how, how have you been kind of... Like I said, at the beginning of the trailer, I was hyped. But at the moment, at the very end, when... It finishes. I, I I'm like unsatisfied with it. It just it, it sort of it didn't kill the hype for me necessarily, but because I'm still gonna go and watch it because I want to. But it's more like there's something missing at the very end. Not just the fact that clearly there's not the other two Spider Man, even though they're there. It's also the fact that there's there's some. It sort of ends on a on a on a flat note. It doesn't really end on a crescendo as it should, a trailer, because it's the whole point of trailers to hype you up. But it doesn't. It just ends in a flat note, and it and it just got me there. It's like, okay, I feel unsatisfied. Uh, Diego, I totally agree with you. It it sort of ended flat. We've all been like, how much more can they tease us that Toby and Andrew are in this, right? Like, it's like we know they're in it. Just show the three of them together, or you've got, you know. To three webs going out where obviously three Spider-Men are, are swinging or just something, you know? Yeah. So it kind of ended flat because they're not really showing it to us, which is fine. I mean, I'm, tonight I'm seeing Ghostbusters afterlife and I'm hearing very similar things about that where, you know, uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, a lot of what you think may happen more than likely will. Well, I've heard so, a lot of good things about Spider uh, Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah but there's, I, I, here's a difference. I think that, what many people think will happen, uh, do happen, is not necessarily a bad thing in the case of Ghostbusters. I mean, I don't think that that movie should try to subvert anyone's exactly. expectations. A little bit of predictability may be just what the doctor ordered in the that soundtrack particular case. Pretty much gives away the whole movie. If you go look at the soundtrack listing, it pretty much gives you every major beat of the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, also, we have to consider the fact we humans are creatures of habit. When things don't go how we like them, we're not the most open-minded to that as mm -hmm. a norm. So mm -hmm. that's why I think Ghostbusters, when people when people are saying it happens exactly like what they expect, as Andre says, I think it's much better in this case because also it's sort of trying to rebuild the brand after 2016, but at the same time is also something you know a bit of this clearly is nostalgia in some senses of the word the, the the first trailer they pointed out when you see the ecto one even it's like that clearly is nostalgia in kicking in sort of trying to connect you back to that whole saga to that whole those two great movies but meanwhile uh, meanwhile it's like i think it's either that or that what people are talking about is the fact that some people are expecting this to be related to the 2016, which is something I've remembered that Andre and Tom have talked about before, that sometimes people are actually thinking it's connected to that. I think and they've so done a pretty that. good job in the last weeks or so, especially mm -hmm. with a lot of the TV trailers I've seen, and they've had you know, the, the three guys out on the circuit quite heavily. So I think, I think that's kind of gone away. I think they're doing a pretty good job now. And I think that's the whole thing with this trailer. And I don't know if you heard anything about this, Chris, but I heard there was actually a little bit of contention between Sony and Disney because they wanted this trailer for Ghostbusters this weekend, but Disney had like talked them into doing this special event to drop it. And the same thing with the poster last week, like they pushed them to drop it a little early to take away the attention away from Eternals doing so bad. Uh, I don't know if you heard anything along those lines, but I, I heard Sony's not too happy that 
the Spider-Man is kind of taking away some of the thunder from Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I mean, look, it doesn't surprise me that Disney and Sony are at odds. That's pretty, you know, that's pretty on the regular. But um, I feel like Sony's position to have the the better the better comic book universe, right? I mean, I, I really think that that we, when you look at the directions that Marvel is going and how they've who would have thought you know, that three years ago? Yeah, <laughs> and they're stuck with these decisions now. I mean, they'd have been they'd have been better off just rebooting the Avengers with younger actors in the roles of Iron Man, Captain America, Hulk, all of that. I know that sounds weird, but I, I feel like people have an affection for those characters, you know? And it's it's not as if we haven't seen a particular character, you know, uh, span through decades with different takes on that character, you know? I'm speaking, of course, about James Bond, right? Like, there have been, and people have their favorite Bonds, and that's cool, but that character has survived, you know, uh, 50 plus years. So, um, you know, like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just really amazed that they seem to think that these weaker characters that don't have like, you know, I don't know what the classic Ms. Marvel comic books are, or even the Captain Marvel comic books, you know, well, actually I do know the ca classic Captain Marvel, but that's not the take that they decided to go with. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that I think that when you look at like a character, like characters like Batman, Superman, Captain America, Iron Man, they have decades decades and generations you know more than one generation of fans and i think there there's that's that's huge you know that's a lot of currency and i don't think that there's currency in these newer characters as much as i'm aware of what the eternals is from the jack kirby comic you know from the 70s um it's uh that's not one that resonates with everybody. Now I know that, like you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. That's the argument. Like, hey, that was not as widely known, but that was James Gunn, where they basically let him do pretty much whatever he wanted, which is that shot. was like your one in a million shot right there. One in a million shot, but that's not that's you know that's a lot of luck and talent went into that, right? Luck, talent, timing. Yeah. I mean, it 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 worked. What the reason I think you see that Marvel's completely lost faith in Eternals is almost all the marketing now includes references to the Avengers. <laughs> they even call Shang-Chi your favorite new Avenger. Is, is he an Avenger suddenly? Was he anointed? Like, I mean, they well, did. No, you're not wrong, Chris. Like a lot of these new characters, I think that's because they're trying to get away from the classic characters because they know they're probably not going to win this case against the Kirby and Lee families, right? Right. So so they're not going to have complete control over these characters going forward and Disney does not like to pay anybody. So <laughs> that's true. So so know. I that's a big problem there. And I mean actually, I mean I would not be against the idea of what you're going you, you know you're kind of getting at and that's what Kevin originally wanted to do is recast all the actors as younger actors. Yeah. And and the Russos are like no 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 no, we're going to finish and, and and rightfully so. They needed to finish out that storyline proper but then i think you're right they should have took like a little break like this whole thing would have been a perfect time for it right to take like a little break and then just kind of reintroduce the marvel characters again the ones we love but you like you're right there's so many of their individual stories we haven't got to see yet like right. we've been we've been barraged with this idea of getting to see all of our favorite superheroes crossing over for the past 10 years like uh -huh. I, i'm totally fine with just seeing a captain america movie again or seeing an Iron Man movie again, you know what I mean? Or just right. a plain Spider-Man movie again. You know, I don't need all these other characters involved to make it enjoyable. Uh, I'm totally on board with you in that sense. Like, they could have just went back to the more simpler kind of, like, like no, we're reintroducing the Marvel characters again, but we're, we're going to go, like, you know, start over fresh. You know, this is our new young Captain America. This is our new Iron Man. This is our new whoever, you know, and just kind of start at that level. And eventually maybe we'll do Avengers again. But for right now, we're just going to kind of, do their own thing. And I wouldn't have had no problems with that. But it's weird when you look at like, and maybe this pops up for me on, on YouTube, there'll be these, you know, you know, these sort of mini trailers for the, the Eternals. I keep saying the Eternals. I know it's Eternals, but I'm going <laughs> to throw, throw the, the in there, but every one of these promos has footage of previous Marvel movies, previous and much better Marvel movies. Maybe it's because look, the decade long build up to infinity war and Endgame was so unprecedented so amazing that really you're not going to reach that hype exactly yeah 
and and taking a break is a good thing, right? I right. mean, the distance between the original Star Wars trilogy and the prequels, I mean, helped the prequels become very successful. And same thing with the, you know, um, the distance between the prequels and the sequels, exactly. right? There was a lot. There was, you know, back to the days of optimism about Star Wars. Um, I'm totally just don't care about Star Wars anymore. <laughs> I don't, uh, even though I have tickets to Star Wars Celebration, yeah. in, I'm in may i think i don't know why i mean i'll just be at the hotel bar drinking superhero or, or uh, star wars themed drinks and if there are members of the 501st there i usually like to hang out with those guys because they know they know how to hang out at a con but um but yeah like i i i just think it can't be repeated and and having a break from it might be a good thing you know having it go away for a bit is a good thing you know there's a reason you know the time between each Star Trek movie made you want to see another Star Trek movie at the time that they were making Decent Star Trek Star movies. Trek. Talking about the original, you know, between motion picture. Funny you touched on two of our other topics we're going to get into here, but sadly Diego has to leave us. So oh. thank you for popping in, Diego. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow on Midnight Desert Espanol, correct? Uh, no, uh, well, the no, new video. Tuesdays yes. now you guys do it. That's yes, right. Tuesdays I show it. exactly. Uh, Chris, it was a pleasure meeting you for the first time being here. Andre, Tom, as always, it was fun. And uh, so uh, remember, in Midnight is Espanol, we are actually having a new video come out yes. on Thursday, which I can't remember. It's the Spider Man one or the Cowboy B one, Bob one exactly. But see you then. Right, take care, take Diego. care Diego. Goodbye. And cool. also joining us, we have Polly. Hey, How you doing, Polly. Hey, hey, Polly. Hey, Polly. Hey. Hey, all right. How are you? Come and on. Holly actually has a big announcement who if you haven't heard already yet, but we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Uh but no, I think you're hundred percent right, Chris, on that, at least in my opinion. I think that's that would have been the better way to go because yeah, I don't think they're gonna reach that height again for some time. But good morning, Polly. Welcome, welcome. Polly had some exciting news for us last night. Uh, we talked about it on Midnight's Edge After Dark. You you talked about it on Latino Slant. Uh, I'm gonna give you a minute <laughs> or two here to uh announce it again to our our listening audience today so yeah we got some surprise coming for monday on the morning show don't we yes 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 this monday guys this monday is something we've been working on for a while well as you guys know uh with uh, robert meyer burnett and andre and tom and uh the last uh, this past year we've had a, um, these amazing panels with edward james Olmos, with uh, the cast of blood in blood out but we've always been kind of like, we just want to keep pushing that envelope of uh, Midnight's Edge Espanol, the Latino slant, the, fam the familia, you know, that, that Andre has created and the uh, kind of the excellence of, uh, of what Midnight Jazz is all about. So we've been, <laughs> been working on this guy for a while and finally got the committed date next Monday morning here on Midnight's Edge. Iconic actor, action star Danny Trejo is joining us here on Midnight's Edge live. And uh, no, you know, this is just, it's going to be pure, pure talk, man. His career, his life, his new book. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, of course I'm excited. I'm just so happy that, that it, it's happening before the end of the year. Uh, this is great news. Machete. He's, oh. Yeah, dude. I, I look, I've Finally. met that guy. He has a presence, and I'll say, if I could throw out a recommend, you have to see the documentary about Danny Trejo's life. It's called Inmate Number One. Mm -hmm. If you've seen it, I don't know, Paul, if you've seen that doc. Which is funny. Uh, That's where this image comes from, I believe. That uh, is the image from it. It's um, so, what he achieved in his life, the adversity he struggled through, the, the, you know, and what he's achieved by in many ways just not giving a fuck like yeah. it's just so admirable and just what how he gives back to the community he yeah he is a national treasure i mean um yeah i encourage everybody see that documentary um inmate number one yeah i mean you you know like so many uh great stories you hear it's just uniquely american as far as <laughs> his where he came from his humble beginnings and you know, uh, you know, you know, um, connecting on a different level with uh, uh, his sobriety life, where it took him years to get sober, and then he finally clicked in around 68, 69, and he's been sober ever since, like you said, giving back to the communities. And um, I mean, on that level, as a kid, I remember 
going uh, and uh, I, I've talked about this before, but I remember going to meetings uh, with my with my father and seeing Danny speak. And, you know, I've, I've had my own journey and now I'm uh, over six years and to to he's just he's just part of everyone's family, man, as far as just being inspirational, um, just being real too. You know, uh, they asked him, you know, you know, hey, you, you've, you, you know, in some interview last past year, you, you played stereotypes. And how do you feel about playing stereotypes in Hollywood? And he's like, uh, I see it as work. I pay my rent. <laughs> you, know, you know, he knows what he what he's got and he he's maximized it like no one else has. So, uh, yeah, man, this yeah. Monday, next Monday, Andre. That's so awesome. I'm so excited about that. I can't wait. I can't thank you enough, Paulie, for for having been so vital in setting that up and also the previous uh, roundtables you mentioned for Blood In, Blood Out, others and everything else we're going to do. It's so, so cool. So awesome. There's nowhere else we're going to get this kind of content. So, yeah, can't wait Chris, for that. Be yeah, back on Monday. Uh, if if Danny was here right now, what what would you ask him, Chris Gore? Oh wow, um, man, that's tough. I mean, because it's one of those things where <laughs> I don't I don't get nervous too often, like talking to, you know. I would ask him either. not to hit me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I I don't know. Like I I um, wow. I don't know. I'd ask him about like some of his favorite and memorable roles but he's a guy also that like because i know i know some filmmakers that have worked with them and they kind of bust his balls like sometimes he forgets like what movies he's been in yeah it's been oh, over 580 yeah he's he's done so many that it's like oh yeah like oh yeah i was in that like like it's just like for him like you said it's work right yeah. but um yeah. i would ask him i would ask him like about like his his journey you know in prison he was a boxer and I would ask about that, like how that that was in a way that was kind of a form of therapy for him. And and also like how he gives back to his community. This is a guy that he never forgot where he came from at all. And I think that's the thing that's like how he's been able to remain so grounded um, by being as famous as he is. I mean, he can't yeah. go anywhere. He can't go anywhere without being recognized. Right. Like, yeah. Did you see his anywhere uh, in the world? I might yeah. add, not just in the U.S. Because like, he has such a striking look, so memorable that he can't go like, go like if he steps onto the streets in Oslo, everyone is going to like machete. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. yeah. That's yeah cool. yeah. I mean that dude. He has like, he he's he's iconic in a way that I would in many ways compare him with with Mr. T. But he mm. kind of like has has that thing going for going for him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, this, and also, what's great about him, and I don't even know this is not even a question, just a comment. But it's it's like mm -hmm. his off camera life is as impactful as his on camera, and that is to be admired. We see and we talk about, and you know, Tom, it's come up where you have some people who've been very. Um, had, had been very privileged and, and had like really great careers and whatnot. Mm. And then their off camera demeanor when they're not acting or, you know, mm. working on, on projects makes, makes them less likable. I'm not going to bring up <laughs> names, but Tom, I know what you mean. <laughs> and I feel like that's Danny, like the lesson, you know, is just to look at, look at this man, not just for the career he built, on, on camera, but also what he did behind the scenes. That's right. where that, that documentary really gets into. But like that is to be admired. Like he's yeah. just a class act all around. I mean, maybe some of that has to do with the fact that he lived some life before he became famous. So he he you know he learned a lot of lessons. Mm. But like yeah. this is the guy that like there's not anyone in the world that doesn't love this man. No, you hit it. I mean, and he's got a new book out. Uh, this that came out this year and uh, another, you know, uh, really great actor uh, and sober buddy, uh, Donald Logue wrote the prologue. And they do a lot of charity together, just like you said, you know, uh, they do a lot of work, man, in the community. And, you know, it, it it's a huge difference between, you know, people that walk the walk and people that just talk the woke points you know, of being of being of being, uh, you know, social justice. 
you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't hear that type of language from Matrejo. He just does it. You know, <laughs> that, that's it. He he lives the ideals that he espouses, but he doesn't even talk about it. He's just like, you know, he's leading by example, which is the to me the best kind of leadership. Yeah, you know, in fact, it's almost the opposite because he gets real shy. Where, you know, or, you know, just real, real humilde, you know, very humble when he talks about what he's doing out there. And like, because, you know, even though he did that Bear Grylls uh, episode and I keep just fanning over that that episode when he was out in the wild with Bear Grylls and Bear's like just in, in just in awe of him. But when he's like, oh, you know, what, what, what do you what do you have to say to the youth and what do you have to say? And he's like, oh, man, you know, just, you know, you know, live, live, live for the day, like real simple you know, like, you know, stuff yeah. that we know that's maybe cliche, but he's so, uh, he's so amable with it. You know, he's so uh, endearing with it. Yeah. it. There's nothing inauthentic about Danny Trejo. Well, I heard about behind the scenes on that episode and uh, mm -hmm. they ran into a bear and it negotiated and Danny let it go. <laughs> so um, it, it was, it was a bit hairy for a minute, but nice. yeah. Yeah, he wanted well, they, a yeah, rug, yeah. but then the bear begged for its life. Yeah. No, no, in all seriousness, do, though, they don't do hikes. Yeah. No, in all seriousness, though, this is an amazing, yeah. amazing, amazing, uh, you know, uh, individual that we, we, we get to c converse with on Monday. And I can't believe we finally got this uh, in order. It's been a long time coming. Uh, I can't wait to talk to Danny. And uh, yeah, I can't believe Paulie finally pulled this off. So. <laughs> gonna be awesome man, you, you don't have no faith in me brother no 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 <laughs> it's just that it just seemed like it was like it was never gonna happen right you know, just you know things through it's no a... fault of yours but through no, scheduling no. and stuff like yeah. that because like these are very very busy people that suddenly yeah. get a new project thrown at them and stuff like that uh but but uh monday with that so awesome so so cool yeah and you know you, you just gotta keep punching right we just gotta you know i never stopped trying uh, was always professional yeah. with his people. Uh, thing is, is that his people they have other clients too. So you know, we, yeah. we've gotten we've, we're getting those people on the Latino slant. You know, some people are narcos Mexico. Some people are singers, uh, which is great. Hey, great content. But I want Danny. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, and I'm so glad we finally got uh, it all uh, figured out. Um, and not to switch gears too much. Let's do um, it, man. Let's do it. But uh, I just got this across my uh, desk here's your look uh -huh. at the uh, matrix resurrections uh, poster he's so pretty it, it looks like a video game that does not look like a movie i was just telling him to stop it's enough i, I, I guess i don't know it's it kind of looks like a, a matrix uh, reunion party autographs all around have the fish <laughs> drinks and everything it, like a convention poster morpheus look-alike contest it's pretty basic i mean you know the only thing worse would be, you know, heads in clouds, which <laughs> a montage, right? But like, yeah, this it, it, I saw the poster this morning and didn't think much of it. I always like a poster that kind of has a second read quality to it, where you notice something and then you look closer and you notice something else. I, I really don't see that there's much going on in that, but uh, Looks... I don't know. My expectations are kind of mixed to low on that, so I hope it surprises me. I don't know. Uh, it looks like John Wick's facing the Black Joker to me. Yeah, that looks like the Joker in the background. <laughs> so, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I. Yeah, okay. Sure. Uh, Keanu's due for a dud. <laughs> yeah. yeah and Diego had a had a, we put up a, a quick uh, short in Espanol. You know, we're starting to do shorts also too on the yeah. Midnight's Edge. Um, he was, you know, in, in his minute, Diego was like, you know. Jesus Christ, <laughs> he's got the long hair. <laughs> you know, he's a, the Messiah, you know, image, you know. I thought that was interesting, but yeah. I've got to film John Wick in two weeks. I cannot cut my hair <laughs> or my mustache or my beard. All right. <laughs> That's kind of like what it feels like happened. Right. Uh, Last Millennial says, and do you think Jeremy R. will be done with the MCU after Hawkeye series and when they bring Fantastic Four? which isn't white they said will you guys still see it um as far as jeremy renner leaving i could care less andre cares even less like he wants hawkeye to die actively yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, he, Tom is not joking. Tom is not joking. I was I like, one day, I'm like, why do you hate him so fucking much? It's like, <laughs> it's like he's just like, I want him to die. Yeah. Um, I, I wish that I could say that Tom was exaggerating, but he's not. It's true. Like, the, the sooner Hawkeye, I'm not talking, just talking about the character, sooner as the Hawkeye the character dies off the better i mean with me he had outstayed his welcome in in um in um age of ultron that's, that's when i was him. yeah 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 that's where i was like okay now you die you die uh instead of because I was, <laughs> and the reason is that i knew that one avenger was going to die and i was terrified it was going to be black widow because I thought that she brought so much to it, I was like, "Fuck! It's gonna be, it's gonna be so devastating to the team, to the audience if they take her." So, like, who am I the least attached to? It's Hawkeye. So, therefore, from that moment, I was like rooting for that character to <laughs> die so that Black Widow could live. Boy, did I choose wrong on that one! I knew but they yeah. weren't gonna kill him the moment they started making him likable and all that stuff. I'm like, they're baiting and switching us. I knew, I kind of knew halfway through. I'm like, yeah, Quicksilver is gonna get it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and as far as the Fantastic Four, will we see it? Oh, yeah. Will it look at this point with the Fantastic Four? If like, Midnight's Edge is still a thing, of course we're going to see it. We're going to cover the hell out of it. Right. Like, not only that, it's like it's a crapshoot at this point. Like, I mean, Midnight's Edge <laughs> was built upon the Fantastic Four. So why would we, why would we decide now we're going to skip that one? No, 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 no. Yeah, we'll follow I mean, that very closely. Honestly, they've all been shit aside from the Corman one, and that one's only not shit just because it happens to be the most like the real Fantastic Four. Or the least far away from exactly. the Exactly, yeah, yeah, Four. that's the best And that goes it. for Doctor Doom. So so let's hope that... Uh, I saw someone earlier said that their hopes for Doctor Doom was that it was going to be uh, a man with like a green cloak and um, the proper armor, and you'll get two out of those three. Yeah. So yeah, I look forward to Victoria from Doom. And we also have Pablo from Midnight Edge Espanol joining us. How are you doing, Pablo? Hey, Pablo. Hail, everyone. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Uh, Rod Thunderheart says, "Hail Midnight Edge in the morning. The worst thing they is they have been making the villains too sympathetic." Yeah, this is probably before I got in my rant. At least Doc Ock had an arc where the arms were AI were corrupting him. Um, yeah, I, I already kind of gotten a rant on this, so I don't know if anybody else wants to share any feelings on that, but uh, I think that was just before you got here, Chris. So <laughs> I said, like, one of the MCU's major issues is they, they make all their villains too sympathetic, uh, and that could just be the writers just having issues not being able to make decent villains. Who knows? But, yeah. No, I, well, yeah I, feel, I feel like they have an obligation to, you know, they feel obligated to tell the villain side of the story. Right. Um, I think it's interesting when it's something like a character like Killmonger, where you go, wow, Killmonger may actually be more likable than the title character in Black Panther. Well, that was one of the examples I brought up as a bad villain because I'm like, yeah, the problem, he's not a, really a villain. Yeah. Yeah, exa but, yeah exactly. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just think it's, uh, you know, I mean, the Joker in the Dark Knight is probably one of the greatest comic book villains of all time. And we didn't really find out what his true origin story. Yeah. We never mm -hmm. saw it on screen. We knew he was a liar and we knew that everything he said would be unexpected. Um, the introductory scene where he comes in with the pencil is brilliant. I mean, it's, you know, like that's a movie villain you don't, you don't know a lot about. And, and that was by design. Christopher Nolan said like, he didn't want to reveal an origin or say anything. He's just a force of nature. And that really worked well. I mean, I'd love to see something like that with Dr. Doom, you know, who legit in a, in a time where like, it's so lazy when you see, agree, especially yeah. when it comes to television villains, the thing that they do is they give them a hoodie. Although Dr. Doom legit has a hoodie. Yep. So um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or a cloak. No, but in that last movie, like they literally gave him like an Amber Combry and F Fitch hoodie or whatever it was. Like was seriously, lame. But um, no, yeah, he looked like a beggar, homeless one. He just grabbed like some some cloth from the street. Yeah, but you know, I will see. I don't have a lot of faith in Fantastic Four or yeah. even much of what the MCU. I mean, I saw the new trailer for Hawkeye and didn't, and there they there was some extended scene. There's a trailer um, for Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's sure. been one for a while. There's two of them now, I think. Two of them, yeah. Yep. I just, it just doesn't. I look at this and I go, this is just filler. 
it reminded me of, you know, I think I watched uh, season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and I was like, okay, I'm good. When it connected to uh, Winter Soldier, I thought, oh, well, that's really clever. We've never really seen that, right? It like changed the series um, in a way. And then it, it wasn't interesting after that, right? Um, yeah, Hawkeye's supposed to be an echo too, Andre, just to make you happy. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It just, I just think it's a way to just, you know, they're going to, they're going to sunset Hawkeye and they're going to bring in, uh, Kate Bishop, you know, that's, that's all of these are is just like, let's replace the old characters with newer, less liked characters that are just echoes of them. And so what? Mm -hmm. uh, Which is funny that be, echoes it's going to be, it's gonna be, let's replace, uh, let's be real. Let's pr replace the straight white men with, yep. um, mm -hmm with either uh, anything but right and uh yep and uh we're yeah. gonna reach a point where the only two white men left are gonna be tom holland and uh dr strange um, oh uh the electro um actor actually uh put on instagram uh, an image with miles morales in this movie so mm, maybe I was I just, just gonna see. say until they replace Tom Holland with Miles Morales, yeah, and they find right. some way to make Doctor Strange a black woman. Yeah. The thing is, Marvel is no longer having the fun that they should. Uh, for example, Doctor Otto Octavius tried to marry uh, Aunt May. He was in a love triangle between Aunt May, uh, J. Jonah Jameson, and uh, and Kim. So that's something that they could have introduced some way in the MCU. Just he's the boyfriend of Aume or something like that. And then you discover he is the villain. Then you discover his uh, real identity. Also, uh, with Dr. Doom, uh, the motivation for Dr. Doom is that his mother is in hell. So if they wanted to introduce Dr. Doom before Fantastic Four and make uh, him a real big villain, they could go on Dr. Sure. Strange. They meet on hell. Uh, Doctor Doom has the tech from Iron Man, has the powers from uh, Doctor Strange, and they can go from there. So there's ways they can do it, but they no longer have that interest on having fun with the ideas in the comics. And they are going just by the numbers. You misgendered Doctor Doom, though. Victoria is not happy about that. She's... <laughs> I like the origin of Doctor Doom from the just the original, you know, yeah first hundred issues of the Kirby Lee run where they, you know, he and Reed Richards were colleagues in college and there was an accident. Although it's interesting, I've got this old sketchbook of Jack Kirby. It's just literally a hardcover limited edition sketchbook of art by Jack Kirby. And it's done with this really cool ink where they mix black and silver. So it actually looks like it's pencils. And Kirby, Kirby wanted to reveal that because, you know, the, the impression in your mind is that Dr. Doom is like hideously disfigured from this accident. And the truth is, and I have this sketch. I think Andre's uh, brought this up before. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He, he takes the mask off and he has one small scar. And he's such a narcissist that he decided he just wanted to hide his face forever because of that. And yes. and I have a drawing of that that, that Kirby did. Um, I'm not sure if that ever, because I look, I, I've read a lot of runs of the Fantastic Four, but I'm not, I don't consider myself a, a completionist or an expert on that. So I don't know if that ever came out in the comics, but I like that take. I like that idea. Yeah, no, like yeah, in, the, in the comics, it's mostly that he like, looks like Freddy Krueger behind that mask. That's like mostly what they're going with. But I agree. I think that's a far better take. And I would love for it in the movie if that was like, you burn me, like it completely destroyed my face. Then we see him and he's like, yeah, he has like this tiny scar and like some some things that might as well have been like acne scars. That he's nothing wrong with him. That would be hilarious. If well, they want, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, sorry. If they wanted to have a white guy as an evil man in the MCU, Dr. Doom is the perfect example. Because he is actually connected with so many characters. He has been in fights with almost every single hero in the MCU, so they can go everywhere with him. Except and also, yes, if he's with just this tiny scar, that's appealing. 
I just regret is... that they've already wasted the perfect actor for him, Mots Mikkelsen. Yeah, yeah. Except for now, they'll just end up making him the long lost brother of T'Challa. That's how he gets diplomatic immunity everywhere. Oh, uh, <laughs> you watch. Yeah. <laughs> Or long lost sister, I said. I should say. Actually, there have been some rumors of him being ha having like some some tie to, to Wakanda. To, uh, to Wakanda yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry. And that, that one of the people that they're looking for is John Carlo Esposito. They can go for Doctor Voodoo. Uh, he has an awesome run. Uh, is like uh, twenty ten. He's a great character. Uh, he is the next uh, Sorcerer Supreme after. Uh, Doctor Strange, but Doctor Strange doesn't die. He actually retires and when Doctor uh, Voodoo goes out of control, Doctor Strange is there to teach him how to do things properly, so yeah. and yep, he's done. Yeah. Well, I swear we're not doing this on purpose. They're not tag teaming, but Polly has to leave now. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, uh, Polly's got some, uh, you got anything real quick you want to plug for uh, Latino Slant or Midnight Tidge Espanol coming up? Yeah, um, well, tonight on uh, my on Latino Slant, we're going to be doing a retrospective on Carlitos Way with Tom Conkle, with you, Connors, and uh, Mexican Iron Man. We're going to read some scenes from the movie as well, so that'll be some good silly fun as well as paying tribute to this awesome Yeah, for movie. those who are wondering why I sound like I'm more tired than usual... <laughs> Universal Studios can kiss my ass. They lied on the Blu-ray cover of Carlito's Way. It says it's an hour and 32 minutes. That movie is 144 fucking minutes. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, I can watch this quick, knock this out quick, and go to bed. Here I'm like 90 minutes into the movie. I'm like, wait a minute. This is not even near done. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? Sorry, that was just like a randomness. <laughs> but it was like, it's like they're wrong. on it. it says one hour and 32 minutes. I'm like, what, what world did they get that running time from? Well, we've been, you know, we've been, you know, trying to organize this for for a while now. So I don't know why you waited to the last minute to see it, Tom. Because I just finally got it on 4K like a week ago. Okay. And also, that's my fault because I always keep him busy. That yes. too. <laughs> and then, um, Pablo, we're going to be recording a, a new video for Minute Edge Espanol tomorrow, I believe, on Cowboy Bebop. Yep. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You can catch Ka Pablo's video uh, tomorrow. All righty. Thank you, Polly, for popping in. And we can't wait to talk to Danny on Monday. So uh, see you see soon tonight, actually, on uh, Latino yep. Slant. Take care, everyone. Uh, we'll talk, talk some Carlito's way. Yep. Uh, Joe Kim Stark says the Groundhog have been uh, has seen KK Shadow, so we will have three more years of winter. Wow. <laughs> one of our topics. Um, uh, as we've been reporting for a while, we broke Mikey Sutton's scoop almost three months ago that KK was probably going to get renewed. Yeah, I'm very happy to say that we were the absolute first outlet to say that because Mikey Sutton, he gave that exclusive to us. And in the video, we say it comes from Geekosity, but he actually didn't publish it until the day after. So it's his scoop. He gets all credit for it. We were the first to disseminate and publish it, even before Geekosity. Yeah, and along similar lines, I, like I, I've brought this up a couple times now, even back then, that in passing, someone had mentioned, like, if she gets renewed, it's because of the movies making a billion dollars each, as far as the main trilogy. Um, and that would probably explain it being three years. It was probably some automated thing that kicked in, and she got first right to refusal. And that would also explain, because, like, you know, Chapek has publicly said he does not want these long-term deals anymore. Well, that would explain it. Uh, and again, it... I never thought she was going anywhere really to begin with. Uh, like I said, at the top of the show, she's, she's one of those people in Hollywood where her, her successes far outweigh her uh, disasters at this point. So no matter how bad she's fucked up star Wars, she's still Kathleen Kennedy uh, and, and nothing that anybody says is going to change that. And she doesn't even have to have a bunch of, uh, dirt on anybody she's still yeah. just the most powerful woman in hollywood period and chris so. has to has to run here but real oh, quick yeah, before you go that, uh do you do you have like any thoughts on that um, because Kathleen, again this yeah. is this still has not been reported by any trade not officially it just but... comes from one blog it comes from the blog of the former editor of the hollywood reporter well, uh, and he and he, he put it out in the same story where he's trashing her well, somebody retweeted Chris, what do you make of this? Somebody retweeted it. But anyway, I, go ahead, Chris. I, well, uh, first of all, I hope it's not true. 
I hope I hope that that's something that's been floated, meaning it's an offer that's being discussed, but the ink isn't dry yet. So, um, but I just think that you know any smart person would look at the fan reaction to what she's done. The the sort of across the board, the sequel trilogy, ha no one's happy with it, right? There are people that like some movies, others that like different movies, but for the most part, everyone is united in the fact that, wow, the sequel trilogy was the biggest missed opportunity in the history of movies. And each of those movies should have made $2 billion each. Yes, right? that's it, right. Mm -hmm. I get pissed it, off when people say, but they made a billion. It was supposed to make two or three. Precisely. Yeah, that's not so so I, I, I don't know like what the, the you know, I, I'm hoping that it's just something that's being floated and negotiated, but they have to, people at Disney have to be aware that they're the fan reaction to what Star Wars is as a franchise today. It's it's shattered. Um, fandom is shattered because of just some terrible decisions. Uh, um, I think you just look at the general quality of what's been coming out. I mean, as much as The Mandalorian has its highlights, it's an okay TV show with some really interesting highlights and kind of showed that like, maybe that's the universe that the sequel trilogy should have taken place in, right? Something that was a little closer to, to the original trilogy. I think that people, people, people I think would have responded more positively to that. So I think it's, I think it's a terrible decision to, to, to extend that contract, but maybe there's no one else powerful enough, right? And and who knows what's part of this negotiation? Maybe three years as being a figurehead, where she's um, not as not as involved in the creative decision making. So I think there's much more to it. I think Kamran will have like um, a better perspective on it. I, I just think you can't. I, I'm not. Ta I don't. I don't know that it's three years with the exact same job. I, 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 I'm going to guess that it comes with some strings attached. Well, That's Mikey's all. initial scoop actually said that Favreau and Filoni were actually going to be more in control. And then I think that was actually confirmed later on in a, in another report uh, from one of the, the actual like deadline or somebody else. There was some in passing comment about that too, that they would be overseeing all that stuff going yeah, forward. Basically, they would be the ones calling the shots. She's there to say so she can save face because she has failed at finding a job anywhere else. Well, she'll retire after this. That's it. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, that's, yeah. Um, well, that's what I've been saying, too. She's going to be there until she decides to retire. Exactly. So, look, I, I think that just on face value, when you look at all of the, like, consider all the false starts of projects that she was involved in. Consider all the turmoil between directors almost every project had behind the scenes turmoil with the exception of the last jedi right which is the only movie that didn't really we didn't hear that there was much drama but there was definitely drama with jj right and i and i think if if he had the the luxury of being honest he would say that his experience working with disney and and lucasfilm on the star wars movies was not a good one but he was not a right he was not a good fit anyways i mean i think he proved that like he he has the ability to sort of destroy a franchise which is <laughs> heartening um so i don't know look i wish she was gone i think that would be good for star wars i think, I think you're right though uh chris on the jj thing because i don't think you ever heard my analogy before about the last jedi and and the rise of skywalker Oh, I haven't heard it. They're basically the world's most expensive Twitter fight between directors. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it is true. It's so weird how each of them tried to undo what the other did. There wasn't yep. like a cohesion. You know, there wasn't like, you know, I mean, the original trilogy, I think George Lucas in his best role was executive producer on The Empire Strikes Back, right? Like he had, I mean, I, if, if you know anything about the making of the first Star Wars movie, it nearly killed George Lucas. Right, I mean, right. Mm -hmm. Physically, um, if you really delve into it, he, it just, just it made him not want to direct, right? It really just sort of scared him off because it took so much out of him physically. So I don't know. Look, I'd like to see Kathleen Kennedy gone. I And I'm hoping that this three-year extension that who knows if that deal is closed, that it's going to come with strings attached, which is less creative involvement, more on the executive side and whatnot. And then just stop pushing fucking agendas into, right. into movies um, 
which is what I've said all along. I think that is what's the, you know, I, I feel like, um, you know, Marsha Lucas said it best in that uh, quote from a book where she just said, there's a, pr they profoundly misunderstand what star Wars is. And Absolutely. the fact that, you know, she's distraught about it because she was a huge creative driving force behind the scenes, you know, whether you know how much that she contributed. I mean, she, star Wars, we would not be talking about star Wars now if she was not behind George fully and, and was the editor of that of the original film for which she won an Oscar. So um, I don't know. It's and it's so funny that she says that she you know wanted Kathleen Kennedy to reach out. Yeah. Um, so uh, you know, uh, God, I, I think you might like what uh, what uh, Cameron Pasha already said about it. Oh, what did he what say? He said uh, that I'm just paraphrasing here, but basically it's like if this is true, it's not been confirmed, so keep that in mind. But if this is true. Uh, then they can have a three-year contract in writing, which is for her to save face and everything like that. But also there can be a handshake deal that, yeah, you have three years in writing, but the moment, for instance, Indiana Jones of 5 is done or next October or something, you have found a new opportunity or you've decided to retire, retire to spend time with family. You're not going to serve out those three years at your request. Well, even still, like deal. I pointed out, like everything is pushed out to the point where it's just like the last time she was renewed. Everything got pushed, remember? Now right. it's being pushed out again to damn near the end of her contract this time again. Right. And and it's very questionable if Rogue Squadron will ever see the light of day. Uh, I mean, it's not even questionable. It, it, it never will. That They pretty much said so. The, I've the, taken off the schedule. And maybe it'll report, come back on time. When you stop going, asking okay, about it, it never we will. we got to be clear because I know, I know Chris has to go. But we got to be clear about this. All this stuff that's out there right now, the renewal news, Ryan Johnson's thing being shelved, the Rogue Squadron thing being shelved, all that is coming from the Matthew Baloney blog. Every source that the, every every paper that's running this, if you look at the source, that's what they're using as a source. Now, I'm not saying it's not true, but I'm just saying people need to be reminded of this. This none of this has been officially said anywhere. The only thing that's made any of this official was the fact that that Mr. Kathleen Kennedy himself retweeted it. That's the only thing that has made this even remotely official. And, and I think that's why most of these places are running with it. I, I don't. I don't mean to, um, you know, ignore jo Joaquin uh, Stark's uh, super chat. But Script Doctor has a really good comment. He says, "If okay. Marsha Lucas, if Marsha Lucas and Gary Kurtz didn't part with George, the prequel trilogy would have been just as impactful as the OT." I 100% oh, agree. Yeah, with that. Totally. Return of the Jedi would have been a different movie because Gary Kurtz parted ways with George after Empire Strikes Back because George felt that Gary was trying to take things over and there was mm -hmm. there was just a lot of friction between George and Gary but you know look it's weird it's weird because we sit here and talk about this behind the scenes drama like it's a bad thing in right. some cases it ends up being a good thing if you know anything about the making of you know the godfather there was so much turmoil in that and the godfather is probably one of the greatest or american films even. of all time and and you know look there was turmoil in the midst of star wars but these were creative people talking about the original trilogy that fought with each other right and Absolutely, and, yeah. and to a good end but then there's drama behind the scenes that ends up in garbage and that has been mostly the history of kathleen kennedy's tenure at lucasfilm has been lots of behind the scenes drama and very little creative success that she can actually point to herself so Absolutely. um and you know what it's probably a good time for me to duck out because here come the leaf blowers right on time <laughs> for when I'm uh, uh, doing a podcast uh, or a live stream. But I want to thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, we love you, Chris. And we're always glad that you can pop in. Appreciate it. And thanks to the chat too, everyone there. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll be back. Thank you so much. Thank you for showing up, man. We appreciate it. Take care, right, sir. Take care. Later. Yeah, Bye. Thanks Bye. for joining us. Thank Don't God. forget to Bye. check out Film Threat and uh, everything else. Uh, yeah, so there you go, Joachim Stark. Uh, that's kind of the well. I mean, really, that's kind of us covering the whole thing. Then, outside of one thing, um, are you going to apologize at all? I'm sorry, kids. I didn't mean to retweet it. <laughs> she made me do it. I can't uh, uh, yeah, you. and uh, that, that for keeping the keeping the sanctity of the house, that may be true. Um, because she what I find interesting, invite Alec Baldwin over for dinner, okay? Yeah, what's uh, yeah, yeah, her or 
yeah, her or Binger, right? Because he'll do the same thing. Couldn't take that but, chance. But I'm anyway, sorry, I'm going. I'm done. Yeah. What I find interesting is that the last time Kathleen Kennedy was renewed, Disney never announced it. They never Disney, did. Yeah. They never confirmed or anything. What happened was that it was Kathleen Kennedy's camp that leaked it, but they leaked it to the trades. It was made official because it was published by either Variety or Hollywood Reporter. One of the two. I think it might have been the Hollywood Reporter. was Actually, you know, if it was the Hollywood Reporter, it would have been the same guy who did it. Because the, the guy who publishes now... He would have been the editor of the Hollywood Reporter at the I time. I can't even recall offhand now. It's been so long. But anyway, it was either Variety or Hollywood Reporter where basically Kathleen Kennedy's camp leaked that she had been renewed. And Disney never made any kind of comment. But they didn't have to because it was already published by the trades. No trade has picked up on this. But there have been numerous articles trashing Kathleen Kennedy. Now, exactly what that means... I don't know, but I do find it interesting. I was going to say, I think it's deadline. Stephanie thinks it's deadline too. Stephanie Jan checks. I Maybe it was it, deadline. I don't yeah, recall. Deadline, yeah. But basically, it was leaked, and now none of them have so far picked up on it. And uh, well, actually, well, I think THR and a few others have done a story on it now. Oh, they have. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Late last night, they started picking up. But again, they're still all going but back. But are they? But are they confirming it, or are they just saying that? I this think story that's where the run. three year part come in. Is they? I think they have. I don't know if they've confirmed confirmed it, but like everyone I read up to, the, I, I haven't read any of the later ones. But all the ones I was reading was still citing the Matthew Baloney thing. So I don't know. <sighs> that's I the checked, source. Last and I checked, are... that's still the only source. Yeah, and then we are just as far. But again, I I'm I think it's. it's I'm not it's, disputing it. Yeah, I'm not disputing I'm not it. I just again, find we've been it saying it for a while, so I, I think it's true. Um, and again, it's. I'm not surprised. So like that's why you don't hear me going like, "Oh my god," and all this shit. Yeah, no, we knew this. Like yeah. we've been saying for years. I mean, I love it when people like say, "You've been saying she was." No, go check our coverage. Go check our coverage. No, I've said had anything couple, sort. Surprisingly, we have not had as many people. I had like a couple of trolls, I think, last night. Other than that, I, I haven't been bombarded on Twitter by it or anything. I'm surprised. Um, but no, Lord, normally when this kind of shit happens, we get a lot of the people you're talking about, Andre, who just assume because they puppet the same shit they hear in a you know in a chat room somewhere or on somebody else's video or whatever that we're saying this or we're saying that it's like no if you actually go and check our reporting that's not true no. we we do our best in our now we will give our opinions on these live shows right that's a totally different scenario we will talk yeah, we'll we say we, we think she should be fired but we don't say that right. she's going to be in our reporting though we always try to be as accurate as we can there's tons of shit we hear all the time that we never go with because we can't match it up with stuff there's stuff we hear that's accurate that we never 100% go with because we're not sure. In fact, I got scooped on some Star Trek news, right, Andre? <laughs> we do, and that, uh, and we'll get into that momentarily, but that also yeah. confirms our earlier reporting. Well, that's one of the reasons why I was detail. like, ah, oh, that sounds too good to be true, because like you said, it kind of confirms some of our early reporting. So I heard this the day before it dropped, and that was the whole Netflix situation, which we had kind of been reporting on. But we'll what, get into that. Before that, let's yeah. Yeah, let's run through a couple more yeah, of these let's super get chats these here. Super, super chats yeah. here. And Paulus Plain sends in a hundred Norwegian Corona. Thank you so much. Says, "Oh, dude, Andre, I had part two KR three nine hundred root canal today. Ouch." Yeah, that's a Ow. that's a lot of money. That's the four hundred yeah. bucks almost. <laughs> that's a four hundred buck root canal. Ouch, ouch, my friend. If you're not kidding, ouch. Uh, unless he's just setting it up for the joke. No, uh, he said that last week that he, he was did? Gonna, okay. He oh, was ouch. going for a root canal. Owie, owie, owie. Someone's uh, always getting one. I feel your pain, my friend. I've never had one, but I don't want one. I've yeah. never had one. I've had. I've removed wisdom to teeth by surgery. Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it is absolutely something that I do wish upon my worst enemy. We'll put it that way. <laughs> oh, yep. Callum Lyle says, I'd like to see the Savage Land dinosaur. So, oh, yeah. I love dinosaurs. I'm all for dinosaurs. Where's dinosaurs my dinosaurs rule. in Star Wars? No, no, please just try to make them as good as Steven Spielberg did in Jurassic Park back in uh -huh. 1994. Ignore modern day crap. Just try to go back to what they did then. 
ignore modern day Jurassic Park. Jurassic World is the CGI is not good. Yeah, you know it's unbelievable sad. how they perfected dinosaurs then, and they've never been able to top them. Yeah, and it's funny because they even paraphrase in the in I think the last one that I've been what I've been saying all this time is that is why do we need all these new fucking fangled dinosaurs? Isn't the originals fucking scary enough? <laughs> you already got raptors and T Rex. You don't need an Indominus Rex. Yeah, exactly. Ah, I got silly. It's like, uh, come exactly. on, if you're gonna do anything. Keep, you keep <clears throat> promising us military dinosaurs. Let's strap some guns to these bitches. Come on. Fuck the other shit. That, that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> you keep teasing us with this shit. I want to see a raptor running around with AK-47 strapped to its fucking head. That's what I want to see. <laughs> you know? That makes me think. So many video game movies and they're still not a <laughs> Dino Crisis movie. Dino Crisis needs a movie. Oh, there's so much cool shit they could do with dinosaurs they haven't. That is such, yeah. a, such a good point, Callum. Uh, Kaiju King Ga Gabrielle says, uh, well, they are testing out violence and blood on Hulu with the hit on hit and monkey series. Hit and a monkey series? That's a Marvel property. Uh, also, he hello, everyone. Hitting hello. the monkey. Is that a synonym for spanking the monkey? Uh, is that what it is? Maybe he couldn't write spank the monkey and because of Google shit. Yeah, I don't know. So. Um, I've heard that they were gonna. So you got to also remember some of this stuff was, you know, they're gonna try and do some adult stuff. But I, from what I know, I, I would never count on anything outside of Deadpool being remotely R rated with the Marvel universe. Um, and I'm I'm thinking we're gonna get one more Deadpool movie, and that's probably it. Because um, I've actually been hearing rumors that Ryan is not too happy right now. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why things have not been going too quickly ahead on Deadpool 3. But it, it's still going to happen. Um, but they're kind of like dicking him around a little bit. But I don't think they're going to be stupid enough to try again with PG-13. That last thing didn't work. So Yeah, let's hope not. But as far as like the Punisher and Blade and all that kind of stuff, I would not get my hopes up. Um, and they were going to do a, a Kevin Smith was supposed to be producing a, uh, a Howard the Duck series that got killed, and I would imagine that would have been more adult oriented. Um, and he probably would have, and he would have been better than for that. Exactly. Than Thank you, Andre. I was like, fuck. That's the reason why he took He Man because the fucking Howard the Duck series got killed. Because if he had Absolutely. if he had been busy working on that, he probably couldn't have took He Man. Exactly, and uh, everyone would have been better for it. Yeah, see, that's more up his alley. Howard the Duck yeah. is definitely more up his alley. And just think, if you could have had Howard the Duck with Kevin Smith dialogue, now that would have been fucking funny. But now yeah. instead, he's fucking ruined everything. Anyway, sorry, I'm not going to get into that. Rod Thunderheart. Says, hail midnight edge in the morning. We are in the age of C students, as George Carlin said, and now they've forgotten how to science. Yes. And again, I don't want to totally pick on the kids of today because there's a lot of great, smart kids out there. Oh, absolutely. And it's uh, not unfortunately, even the they're fault. not in the position to make real change. Right. And it's not even the kids' fault in some cases. It's the teachers, it's their parents, it's, you know, it's the entire system around exactly. them which have enabled the worst possible traits. Exactly. And um, you need someone to keep that in check. Also, on that note, before we move on with the Super Chats, yes. six, comment on something I said with Worm. If Midnight's Edge is still a thing, I plan to be on your chat on my deathbed. And six, don't you worry about it. Like, Aww. we're, we're going to be here. We hope that your deathbed is a long, long way off. I would off. say so. But, but we're not going anywhere. Don't you worry about that. And if you were dying, I would hope that we were there, you would find something much better than us to listen to. <laughs> like some Mozart or something. <laughs> Even... Uh, but but that that is sweet. Well, we, we we do appreciate the sentiment, and yes. we're not going anywhere. Don't we, don't you worry about that. Don't plan on it anyway. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I've got to find the next super chat now, and I don't want to go too fast because I'll miss one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I think we're almost there, but I know we have at least a couple coming up here. Here's the one. Uh, Brown uh, Brown vegan blah, says wow machete uh what's that word lo maximo lo maximo the, the best. best the best well done guys thank you well i learned a new word today 
And at that point, this is when we were announcing Danny Trejo. You got Danny fucking Trejo, Trejo in the rain. Trejo's badass. So we're getting there. We're a little behind yet, but uh, still almost an hour behind. <laughs> Danny Anderson says, first super chat for me. Great show as always. Well, hopefully you're still listening, Danny. <coughs> yes. And thank you for that. We're glad to have broken your uh, super chat cherry. Absolutely. So thank you so much. And uh, yeah, sorry for taking so long to get to it, but sometimes it'd be like that. And we do appreciate all the support. No, Chris, uh, we try to have him every Wednesday, but until later next year or the earlier part of next year, he's going to be really busy. And I did not expect him to show up. He literally texted me like half hour before he showed up. He's like, yeah, I'm not going to be able to make it today. So like when he popped in, it was a complete surprise. So sorry about that, guys. We had to kind of kind of bring everything the plan kind of changed there so but we love having chris and we love having his insights so anytime we can get with him we try to make the best of so uh and then paulus plain says uh paulie i love you uh what is this one pablo Dia de Dia. Los Muert oh, okay. yeah, sorry you carry on uh, pablo you do it you do it his job okay Día de los Muertos or Día de los Muertos. Uh, Día de Muertos or Día de los Muertos. Um, I will say Día de los Muertos is the proper way, but I have heard uh, Día de Muertos a lot. So, yeah. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Uh, he's talking about action figures for uh, Las Calacas. Uh, the, the schools that you see, uh, for example, on Pauli's background, Yep, uh, that's yeah, yeah. what he is referring to. Uh, to oh, okay. Calacas. Yep, gotcha. Okay, see, I'm learning. Uh, Tanil says, uh, gentlemen, listening to you as I make edits to legal documents, logs, and exhibits, please help. Being an adult is the worst choice I ever made. Well, unfortunately, it's not a choice you had any say in, Tanil. You know, it's just it's it's it is what it is, man. But I'm hoping we can help you through the morning. Uh, if it's morning where you're at, uh, uh, still it should, well, it's afternoon in most places now in the U S so, um, but, but hopefully we're getting you through your day and we're, we're breaking up the monotony a little bit. So there you go. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. okay. Now we got to the one that you highlighted. So we're getting there. See, I found that one. <laughs> yeah. Getting there. Uh, master clockwork says, would it be. Two on the nose to make Johnny Storm gay. No, that would be right up Marvel's alley. I mean, exactly. in fact, I, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised if he isn't. He will be flaming gay. That's uh, and, and, and black. He's going to be black and flaming. Yep. Like maybe, maybe they'll get the guy who played uh, like the fairy godmother or whatever it was. Like, in oh, I was going to say, if they thing. make him black, then the chances of him being, being gay go up astronomically. Absolutely. Remember what what. Uh, Cameron Posh have said about that with the topic. So, since Johnny Storm was black before, if they were to wait, make him white now, that would send the wrong signal. So, I would put money on Johnny Storm being being uh, black again. And you can't and if have he is black again. Man, yeah, yeah, you can't have a you can't have like a strong black man. No, 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 no. So, yeah, he's going to be There's quite a few minutes. Oh, uh, sorry. There's a precedent on the MCU for Reed Richards to be black because his descendant uh, on Loki, uh, he is black. So uh, the guy that you saw on the end uh, was uh, Khan the Conqueror. He is the descendant of Reed Richards and he was black. Uh, the other could be that since he is a descendant, is through uh, his wife. And well, uh, there you will have uh, a black johnny so yeah that kind yeah. of will happen yeah yeah that's absolutely yeah. and there's a, so yeah you're right because like even in the comics kang the conqueror and reed richards were like descendant of each other so um so yeah that uh, absolutely seems uh, seems quite likely to be the case and kathleen kennedy thinks she should be in the matrix franchise you know what kathy you could actually probably help that franchise can't get any fucking worse well, right. yeah, it's all about dominatrixes on Matrix, so she fits right in. She likes oh, yeah, consumers. Yeah, that should have been the name of the new one, the Dominatrix. <laughs> <laughs> Joachim Stark says, Midnight's Edge exists to step on the movie landmines for us. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, the it's taken a toll on me, but Andre has been... Yeah. Nice and not made me watch so much Star Trek anymore. Yeah, we are we are your minesweepers. 
indeed we are. Snail Messiah says Doug Stanhope as Joker discussed. Doug Stanhope. That's okay. Let's see who is Doug Stanhope. The name does not ring any instant bells to me. Um, okay, I do not recognize his face. Let's see what he's done. He's a comedian. You not guys know who he is? Not horribly no. familiar with him. Um, he's 54, so a bit on the yeah, old side. He doesn't quite look the part. Um, I, I mean, like I guess if you're going for more of like the Jack Nicholson type Joker, perhaps. Um, oh. Are you are you Doug or are you his agent or something? I mean, like, <laughs> uh, uh, I have I have literally no clue who Doug. Yeah, Stanhope this. Is. I, seeing the picture, I'm going to say uh, I need to see some proof of that. Yeah, I can't really speak to it because I'm not really seen too much of the. Yeah, I'm not real familiar with him, so can't. Uh, I mean, I've seen he's been on Howard Stern and a few other things, and he's. A fairly prolific comedian, it looks like. But uh, I've heard a name, I feel. Yeah, the name sounds familiar. And I mean his face looks semi-familiar, but I'm not placing him in anything offhand. Mm -hmm. So I can't really speak to if he's somebody I think that could play the Joker. I mean, look wise, like I said, look wise, if you're going for like the a similar look to like Jack Nicholson Joker, maybe, but I can't speak to his actual chops. Yeah, don't see it. Hmm. There's a rumor about a black joker, so there's something that they are actually doing on animation and on the comics. Well, they already got the black joker in the matrix. Oh yep. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that poster is terrible. Yeah, it looks bad. <laughs> it looks like a straight to video movie. Rob Altus says, Yes, villains are oppressed and marginalized, and we need to do better and to accept them for who they are. Yeah, instead of making them stop trying to kill children and shit. <laughs> we just got to accept it, right? Right. Uh, I am glad that uh, uh, that Chris did bring up Killmonger, though, because he was one of the better villains in the Marvel Universe to this point. Uh, uh, yeah, he was well, kind of a villain, at least. If they wanted, they could use Machete. I keep saying Machete could be uh, Kraven the Hunter, and they could do uh, Kraven the Hunt there on the MCU. Claw was actually a pretty good villain too, but they killed him so I, They killed him way too soon. Yep. Ulysses Claw is a great villain in the comics. I don't know why they would do that. Have a little cameo, have him lose his arm, and then before he gets good to become Claw proper, just kill him off. Yeah. Such, a, such a waste. And, and he Andy Serkis, he's, villain, he's so yeah. good. He's so good at everything. Have you seen him as Einstein? He was perfect to start, as he is in everything. So what a waste. And that's my point is it didn't have any like big sympathetic storyline to him. He was just a straight up villain, nasty gangster type. And that's kind of what we need in some of these sometimes, you know, you don't, they don't all have to be some kind of like tragic villain. Sometimes it just got to be Lex Luthor. Like, you know, like he's just bad because he's fucking Lex Luthor. <laughs> you know, like he knows yeah. he's that bad. You know, he, he's trying to be that bad. He's, he's a selfish, self-centered egotistical maniac right he thinks he's the greatest criminal mind of all time depending on which version you go by but i'm just saying you know it's still kind of true of all of them like until you get to smallville he's never been that sympathetic of a character so and to me that was one of my issues with luther in that show was they made him too sympathetic but that's a totally other conversation and uh joshua if i'm saying that right or joshua i think it's just saying joshua in a fancy way uh, joshua i would i would guess joshua maybe? Let me know if I'm wrong. Yashua. Yashua. Uh, Jeremy Renner equals Secret Service Na or Secret NASA employee. <laughs> I don't know where I got the really? Secret Service from. How? Uh, because he's so stupid. Oh, yeah, because he does not Warachi says, uh, what are your thoughts on Marvel not recasting Black Panther? I'm fine with that. I think no comics character should be limited to one actor portraying them. I agree with you on that point. But uh, I've made this point before, so you must not have heard it. Uh, I feel like the best way going forward with it is not to recast it right now. Wait a little while till you're past the Marvel Universe. Allow, uh, allow them to just continue to have the character in the background doing the kingly thing and, and having his sister or whoever take over the mantle of Black Panther for now. 
till th- time has gone by. He got his story arc through Civil War to the Black Panther movie. There's really no place else to really take the character at this point. Uh, I, I was fine with that. I don't. I, this isn't like a a, a a financial dispute between an actor and the studio. This was sadly an actor passing away between films. It's not like it was in the middle of a movie. There's so many things that just point at the best way of handling this is not recasting the character. Yeah, in not anytime opinion. soon. It needs to be like in a respectful amount of time yes. when you're recasting everyone else anyway. Exactly. Uh, so I ag- also agree completely. No character should be limited to just one actor, absolutely. But given the context, just the context of what happened right here, right. allow the character to step to the side and do more important things while time passes. And then you can do some multiverse stuff like right. later on or something. But yeah. And on that note... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Pablo. Uh, they already have an alibi for that. Uh, after the bleep, there was so much confusion, there was so much chaos in every single country that when T'Challa comes back to life, he needs to take a full-on management role and he gives the yeah. title to Mbaku. Yeah, and, and that's kind of what I've said too, is he just... You, you've probably got more than enough footage of him at press conferences and stuff from previous films that you can just kind of have it in the background mm-hmm. and you just have Shuri or somebody to point out that, yeah, he's, you know, my since my father's gone, he's now the king of Wakanda. He's taking on that role. And in that case, he can't be both, right? Like, it's just like, you can just kind of use that as an excuse or however you want to put it. And it's, it's a respectable way. I mean, it'd be different if, you know, sadly the actor had passed away like right after Civil War. When you just introduce the character, then even then I could see an argument because you're like, oh, we haven't finished this character's arc, right? But with Black Panther, the end of Black Panther, starting with Civil War, you've kind of given the character enough of an arc that it's kind of tied up. You don't have to really keep going with it story-wise. Uh, there's no loose ends really with with the character. He's kind of come full circle. He, he got his father's... Uh, you know, uh, he made his father proud or whatever it was and all that kind of stuff in the movie. And he faced his cousin and all that kind of shit and all the things that kind of started with civil war had come full circle. So yeah, I mean, it's buttoned, buttoned up pretty nicely. They don't need to drag it out anymore. At least that's my opinion. And I feel like that's the best way to handle it going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And I want to welcome Milo as a, a member. Uh, so welcome. Uh, yes, indeed. Welcome Milo. Thanks for joining us. Or Milo, if it's Milo. Sorry if it is. Uh, I don't want to. Milo or Milo, I'm sure. Please correct us. And Trenchman says, hope Venom shows up at the credits. Uh, who knows? Uh, it'll be interesting to see. Though I have heard stick around for the credits of Ghostbusters, guys. Mm. Uh, a couple places now. Uh, Stephanie Janicek says, the puck story goes from she needs to go to, oh, uh, yeah, she's staying. I'm not sure if she's even leaked it now. I don't think that she would have leaked it because here's like the thing, says Stephanie. That puck story is trashing her. That's what I feel like. What what I find is like so weird is that here you have a story that is trashing her, saying she needs to go. Oh yeah, she's renewed for three more years. The end. Yeah, there's kind of a reason why not to uh, say that you are rehiring her or you are renewing her contract, and it's because she already carries so much baggage that that's a pure nightmare. In itself, there w- will be things about Dina Carano, there will be things about all these uh, economical losses, and that's something that you cannot have when you just had that report on quarter four. You cannot do that. So basically, if they renew it here, it will be silent on their part. If there's a rumor, there's a rumor, and most people won't even touch it. Yeah. Trench Trenchman says, Big hope we get some Toby Spider Man Marvel Legends. Oh, if he's in the movie, likely. And uh, now that Marvel has most of the uh, uh, toy rights, anyway, I'm sure we will. Um, so, yeah. I, I wouldn't get too worried about that. I'm sure. I think <laughs> Robert Meyer Burnett even made a joke about this movie couldn't cost him so much because of hot toys. <laughs> <laughs> Snail, Snail Messiah points out, Andre, that a root canal is more like six or seven hundred dollars. Ooh. So uh 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, fine. So I did a miscalculation of the currency. Thought you should know. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true. Yeah, like six, seven hundred bucks is more like we the about... currency this way. Yeah, this is where we're talking about dinosaurs, and of course, Natasha reminds us of nunchucking dinosaurs. Of course, uh, one of these days I will get to that. Paulus Plain sends in another super chat. Thank you so much. Says chat, please don't rigor the man Andre on here. How do I say that on here? On here. Hi, hi, hi. On hi, 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 I'm not saying it anymore. On NASA, the man needs his peace and quiet. <laughs> so he's conceded now. He, yeah. He's letting it. He's letting 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 things lie. So yeah, now just NASA needs to up their game. <laughs> yeah, if we want to be a civilization type one, yep. Yeah, STR yeah. Red Wolf says Arnold Schwarzenegger riding a T Rex with Gatling guns mounted on the sides and lasers on their foreheads like fucking sar- sharks. Credit idea to Tom. Yes, I will ride that T Rex. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I watched that. Yeah. You know, I have to thank you, Andre, because you reminded me that I'm not, that of the yeah. I, I forget who <laughs> yeah. does that. Yeah. There's yeah. always those little quirks that helps helps a voice. I exactly. uh, already got this, but thank you again, Milo, for being coming a member. And then Danny Anderson says, second super chat ever. Well, thank you so much for your second and first. KK is a lame duck president. The new ton- contract is a golden parachute, and she will retire within a year. Let's hope. Let's Not hope. Even if it's a couple years. Like I said, all these projects are pushed so far out that this stuff is all going to start coming out, if it even does, right at the end of her tenure. Uh, and at that point, that's when she'll hopefully – she's probably trying to leave on some success and, and as much as a success as the Mandalorian was, it wasn't a theatrical success. So I'm hope I'm thinking that's what she's hoping for is something to kind of leave on a big shebang on, right? Like that's what it feels like to me. Otherwise I think she would have left already, uh, but I could be totally wrong. She is KK and she could be very, uh, from what I've heard, she's very egotistical. So, we're still trying to work on what's going on here, like check with different people and stuff. Like, like something is definitely weird. Something is off about this. There's something off with the way that this was announced, or not announced, but like brought to the public compared to what happened the last time. So something is weird. Well, the reason I believe it even more wholeheartedly than us reporting it a few months ago is more so just the fact that Frank Marshall retweeted it. Uh, but that just because that leans more into again with the whole thing that we were just saying is like Disney's embarrassed they don't even want to announce the shit mm-hmm. exactly and that's like the same thing that was the thing even under Iger even then there was no public show of support because they knew she was botching it even then I mean has any studio executive botched something as badly in history I don't think no. so no, and it doesn't matter who you are, if you're another YouTuber or whatever who's trying to say we've done this or done that or do nothing but bitch about Star Wars. Proof is in the pudding. We're not the only ones saying this shit. You have if we're Forbes bitching articles. about it, there's a reason for it. Yeah, you've got Forbes articles. You've got uh, all these other articles, including the one that Baloney just put out that sparked <laughs> this whole entire fucking thing. The whole point of that article is the headline. Star Wars needs to be taken away from Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I think it's as we've reported before, it probably already has. And uh it's just uh, it's a lame duck I mean, position. I've probably. been hearing some things that she may have very little to do with Rogue Squadron going along with a lot of our other reporting that we've heard before, too, is the, the whole satellite mom thing. So again, I digress, and, and that kind of makes sense with why she this whole thing would have happened with Obi-Wan. Remember going back. They said the scripts were done. She acted like she read the motherfuckers. We know she probably didn't. She introduced Obi-Wan, did all this big hoo 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 and then Mandalorian comes out, and they're like, oh, fuck. We got a delay. Why? Because the scripts are too much are like Mandalorian. Gee, you'd think somebody might have been fucking paying attention. And here's the thing. I can't just put the blame on her because there's got to be, what, like 20 fucking people between her and everybody else who probably have, should have noticed that, oh, Maybe these things are a little too fucking similar. And I can believe yeah. it because let's be real. What, what what would the original story be about? What I probably posited before. Obi-Wan Kenobi having to overlook young Luke's in some way, even though he's not going to actually come into contact, contact with him. Or even if he does, it doesn't matter because Luke acts like they know each other, at least met once before. And it's not like they've never met before. 
because he refers to his old Ben a few times. And when they meet, he clearly knows who the fuck he is. Right. So like that's could be like, oh, well, duh, if you got this little kid and, and a Jedi's toting him around, that's a lot like the Mandalorian. I can see that being very similar. Right. So like I believe that fucking story. I believe that she was so fucking far away from all this shit and nobody fucking came to the conclusion that maybe we should rework this. And that's why we're in this position now with Obi-Wan. And I don't care how you feel about them facing off with each other. I, I have zero interest in this Obi-Wan series because of that shit. It should be far removed from anything else. If you're going to give me an Obi-Wan series, it should be something much different than what they're proposing. But I, again, it's I don't want to sound like, oh, I'm just not getting what I want. But it's like I have no no faith in this shit. The only person I have faith in is John Favreau, and he's relying on Dave Filoni. And I don't trust Dave Filoni as far as I could fucking throw him. You shouldn't. If you saw what he did with the Bad Batch, uh, you shouldn't. Uh, he is in exactly the same team. That's the thing, because and... he has too much of his own personal bullshit involved. Yeah, and there's something bigger there. Uh, there's a lot of people, even if they get rid of Caitlin Kennedy. There's a lot of people in the same agenda, in the same mindset. Well, um, exactly. You, yeah, if you see the last production has been filled with uh, wokeness, uh, Bad Batch was filled with wokeness to the brim. Uh, when they stopped uh, the series being about this awesome girl, they focus on another awesome girl. That's what they do, the bestest ever and nothing more. And in the last uh, batch of animations from Japan, there was three maybe good uh good shorts and the other ones were just lame so well yeah. and that's just it as far as like the gina carano thing like here's the thing she may have been the final decision maker on that but she's not the one who started that campaign you're right pablo you can get rid of her but you got to get rid of all her insurgents too mm -hmm. and sadly you share a name with one of them <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, there's something that I have been saying uh, when this Animatrix clone from Star Wars uh, came to uh, to air. There's a studio that has been waiting 40 years to do a Star Wars animation, and they give them that opportunity. And then when they are doing their stuff, America comes and, no, 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 you cannot do that. You cannot show that much skin. You cannot uh, do any of this. And the studio trigger got destroyed. Uh, this golden opportunity because there was too much interference from uh, the studios in America. So it was not even a full Japanese production as people believe. And the put is in the pudding. So the, the proof is in the pudding. And yeah. I don't know how much, uh, how to tell people that this is going on, that is not Caitlyn Kennedy, is more people. There's a lot more of people that is meddling with what you can do, what you can say, what you can get in the animations, in the shows. I don't think uh, Rodriguez will have uh, free reign to do whatever he wants because he will get sexuality into that. He will get a lot of violence, things that you cannot show. Yeah. Andre, anything to add to that? Mm, I think that sums it up quite perfectly. All right. Big Daddy MRI sends us an awesomely huge super sticker with a Shiba dog dressed like a samurai with a number one flag. Thank you so much for that. That is awesome. Shiba dogs um, are cute. Yeah. And Chris Neville points out that Rakeda has over 106,000 people watching mm. him right now. I'm not surprised. And um, he's been killing it. We're so happy for him. That's we're awesome. We're so happy for him. In he fact, he deserves I, it. I'm not even worried about the fact that there's more people there watching, like even probably from our normal crowds. Like I understand completely. Oh, completely. World... Especially when you see how they're botching it. I mean, he the, the defense team just caught the uh, prosecution in withholding evidence, deliberate yeah, over withholding night. evidence. So yeah, I totally understand, and and uh, congratulations to Nick. He's a great fucking guy. I love Nick. I've known him for like a little over a year or so now. Awesome dude. Never had a problem with him, and uh, I'm so quite happy the contrary. Quite guest. the contrary. Yeah. He's been extremely supportive and helpful. Yes, yes, he's been a guest here, and we hope to have him back again soon, of course. Uh, and so glad to see his his success and much needed over what's been going on because yes. just not to get into the whole thing, but considering the bullshit he's went through in the last few weeks because of this, and on top of the fact that the, how the media is presenting this whole thing, we need him right now. 
and this is his moment and I'm glad he's seizing it. And, and I hope it gets even bigger than that because this, this is one of those moments we need for this shit to change. Like this is kind of a very seminal moment uh, and it's very important. So um, yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, it, the, the, a lot of, this is, this is bigger than a lot of things we've seen in the last few years going on. A lot is weighing on this moment. So it is kind of historical. Uh, Carl Bruce uh, sends in five euros, doesn't have a comment, or Google decided to retract it. Uh, but yeah. Uh, Trenchman says, uh, Eric Andre the Joker would be cool. He's that in real life. Um, Eric Andre. Hmm, no idea. Was he talking about Doug Stanhope again? I or think something? so. Maybe. Um, Apparently, he's a comedian. Yeah. I mean, it would. I get that from the chat. Yeah, again, I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't know any of his work, so I can't comment. Sadly, if that's what you're referring to. Otherwise, I think Andre would make an okay Joker. Um, I don't know if he'd make the greatest Joker. He'd make a better Riddler. Yeah, I don't know which Batman villain. I, was, I don't think I would do a very good Rid, uh, Joker at all. I'd be an extremely different Joker. That's for certain. I'd be the yeah. Joker who's dead inside. That's why I'm yeah. saying you make a very meticulous and dark Riddler. I think would be more up your alley. Probably, probably. Less 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 insane, more more yeah, get off my lawn kind of yeah. Uh, Riddler. Yeah. Riddle me this, Batman. <laughs> uh can't get any worse, says Tanil. As far as invent in inviting danger, that's right up there with topless chick in a horror movie saying everything's gonna be all right. You're not wrong on that, Tanil. <laughs> I think he's referring to my point about Kathleen Kennedy taking over the Matrix. If my timing is about yeah, right, on like that. never, never, ever, like challenge fate by like saying, "Oh, it can't get any worse now." Here's like a life life experience. No matter how bad things are, we can always, always get worse. Carl sends in another one. Maybe this is what he was trying to say before, and he just had to find a different way to say it. Sorry if that's the case. Um, but says, do you guys know anything about a hundred bullets movie series based on Brian Azorla's? I'm probably screwing up that name, comic book series. So obviously I'm not. That T. Hardy allegedly has bought the rights to. Um, I heard something about Tom Hardy now that you mentioned that and this, but I am not aware of the series at all. Are you Pablo or Andre? Hmm. Not really. No, I I'm not uh, familiar. I, I know of its existence, but no more than that. Yeah, the only thing I'm aware of is just I remember seeing some uh, some announcement about that. But uh, Pablo, uh, since you don't know anything about it, uh, you have to leave us. So we want to thank you again for hopping in here. And, of course, you can find you every Tuesday on Midnight's Edge Espanol. And, of course, you got all kinds of videos in the works. Anything specific you want to plug before you go? Or did Paulie already handle that pretty good? Oh uh, yeah, he did uh, quite good. But yeah, we are releasing a couple of videos this week. Uh, next week uh, we have a live show. And uh, other than that, uh, thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated being here. Um, uh, well, let's hope things get better. Yes. If not, well, at least we can do something indie, right? Yes, very true. And there's always things in the works, so you never know. And thank you for being here, Pablo. We appreciate you popping in. Hey, uh, bye everyone. Take care. Uh, Tanil says, oh, and Andre, no worries if not interested, but I can send you that Gene Kernan or Cernan interview about space exploration versus exploitation I mentioned on Monday. Oh, yeah, sure. I can check it out. There you go. And I do. I just want to say thank you again to Carl. Uh, sorry, we couldn't really comment too much on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's a good action vehicle for Tom Hardy, then I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll be something more original than we've seen, right? Like, I mean... I didn't want to just totally jump over your super chat here. Sorry about that, Carl. Um, I'm, hopefully it's good. Uh, yeah, I've never read the original comic. I know nothing yeah. about it. I know that Brian Azzarello is generally a really good writer. Maybe. So hopefully it's awesome. But I, beyond that, I know nothing. Sorry. Then Tanil says, oh, I just got Andre's second name. Oh, cool. Very cool. <laughs> and now I'm going to butcher it even more on purpose every time I say it. And I'll even add a farve to it sooner or later. Uh, now he's got 105 5k watching there. Now says Natasha, awesome. No, that's awesome. Uh, did they finally did did the uh, did they come up with uh, uh, anything yet? I know there's 
I don't know if there's been any uh, updates, but if uh, anybody knows anything, feel free to drop it in the chat. Uh, other than that, uh, as far as I know, they're still deliberating or whatever you call it. Um, but the Lord says 100 bullets is phenomenal and highly recommends it. Uh, Lord Absheron AV, uh, AVW says that. Sorry. So there you go. There's one recommendation for it anyway. I wish I knew more about it. Um, but yeah, that means we are caught up on Super Chats, Andre. We are, and we have like one more story that I want to uh, at least very briefly touch on. We'll do a whole separate video about it, so we're going to get into it. Tom, I sent you a, an illustration here from uh, from our good friend, the Illustrator. Why don't we bring up this? So we have that in the background for the final story. Which one? You sent me two of Doug's. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the, the Star Trek one. I figured as much. Uh, all right, hang on. All right, so yeah, we kind of talked touched on this a little bit last night on Mead, um, but uh, uh, the day before this dropped, I had gotten some news about Star Trek, uh, and uh, this kind of goes along with some things we had been reporting for a while, isn't that correct, Andre? Yes, if you will recall, we have been saying in our last couple of videos that what we had learned in no uncertain terms was that Netflix were done. They did not want to fund any more Star Trek Discovery. And that is a big part of the reason why season three ended on something that seemed like a series uh, finale rather than uh, a cliffhanger of, or, or a season finale. Because at the time, they didn't really know if it was going to be a season four. They were planning for a season four, but they knew that it was a very good shot that if Netflix actually walks, they won't be able to do a season four, which is why season three ended kind of like a series finale. And now yesterday, we learned that Star Trek Discovery is indeed done at Netflix. Well, and I'm, I'm going to posit that it's been longer than that. We Since we've been reporting, it is probably when they known this was going to happen. Oh, yeah, we, for sure. Because we learned that season four and five shot simultaneously, and they had no budget. <laughs> and that's probably why they had no budget. Because for those that wonder, Netflix, as the international distributor, they basically paid the entire show almost. And that and was they confirmed did not again get their by worth. Deadline or whatever it was when yeah. the story came out, yeah. Sorry, I was just pointing that out. Yeah, no, absolutely. And uh, now, uh, so basically that's uh, hashtag Midnight's Edge was right. Uh, Netflix is now out of the Star Trek Discovery game. And Checkmate 74 wonders, where do they go now? Ah, here's like the interesting thing, because CBS or, or Viacom CBS, they are in something of a precarious financial situation right now. So they would really appreciate all of that money that a, a foreign distributor like Netflix uh, would bring. And do you think they're going to go to Amazon? Nope, they're going to go to Paramount Plus, as STR Red Wolf says. Problem is Paramount, Red, uh, Paramount Plus is only available in the U.S. and I don't know exactly where else. Very I think few there's other a couple places. other places, but they're in the process of... For all intents and purposes, international audiences now can't see Star Trek Discovery. Until they, they open up. They're going to be starting a bunch of other places. Oh, uh, and there was stuff going on last week where I talked about uh, Stars Networks going up for sale, and uh, they have a streaming service. So I'm assuming that Paramount will just assume that. And if they buy it, and that's what it sounds like. And that's the funny thing, Andre, I wanted to ask you, because you and I haven't had a chance to converse too much about this yet. But Paramount has been spending money left and fucking right. Where are they getting it from? That is a very good question. Uh, there are some people that are are um, propping things up with money. Some, uh, lo some of this is like bank Max. loans. But, but others, other things are investors who don't necessarily expect a return on their investment. Well, they and just we know bought Miramax. They've been, they've been in Star Trek before. They just bought before. Miramax and Dimension from Lionsgate. Now the rumor's going around that they may, they're may they one of the front runners to buy Lionsgate. Because now I don't know if you remember me bringing that up last week. Um, They're spending all this money on the Stars Network, which is attached to Lionsgate. So that's what I'm thinking they're going to do is just 
buy the whole kit and caboodle. If that's the case, then where are they getting all this fucking money from? That's what I'm wondering. I mean, what deals did they pull off? I mean, and then they spent all that money on fucking uh, South Park. Where are they getting this cash? That is a good question. And I do been, not have an answer right they've away. Been very uh, cash strapped for how long now? I mean, quite a while. Years. And then, of course, they announced the Star Trek movie that's supposed to be in the spot of uh, Rogue Squadron. And when that happened, I don't expect us to see a Star Trek movie, but when that happened, I knew there was something up with Rogue Squadron that wasn't out in the public yet. Because for Paramount to have that kind of fucking ego, they knew that movie was not going to open on that date. Like some somebody had gotten word or they had gotten inside word or something. So I knew that was kind of like a telltale sign there. But no, like... I don't think we're going to get another Star Trek movie, but we've got Emma Watts, who's got like one foot out the door. There's this, I can't remember the chick's name, but she's the head of the streaming thing. She's like taking over all this shit now. Now, I don't know how long it's going to be, but now the rest of the Star Trek stuff is eventually supposed to transfer back over to Paramount Plus as well. Now, I know it's still up in some areas as far as the classic stuff, but that is, I think, because uh, I did I did uh, look into a little bit. I think it's because they have... Uh, the contracts still they have to wait out. But once all those contracts are done, everything's going to Paramount Plus, which is what they should have done in the first fucking place. We've said that before. Yeah. That would have actually helped them in the long run. Because like I planned out last night, I am still don't give a shit because I have all the Star Trek shit I want, right? The only thing I'm looking forward to that, that they're going to be dropping on there that I know I can't get elsewhere is going to be the HD version of the director's edition of uh, the first film for a while until they finally release it on video when that ever happens. Um, but outside of that, all I'm looking forward to on Paramount Plus is Beavis and Butthead and uh, South Park. And I'll be damned if I watch anything Star Trek. And um, and Jackass. Let's not forget about Jackass the movie. Yeah, I'm not as big well, a fan of Jackass as you are. But I mean, yeah. I'll probably watch it. But but like that's the sad thing. That's the only things I care about there. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Star Trek. And I, I couldn't care less at this point. No, I mean, that's my problem, too, is I don't care about Star Trek anymore. I really don't. Yeah. I mean, I love the classics. I still enjoy the classics. Unlike Star Wars, it's not as sullied. But because uh, I have a harder time sitting through a Star Wars anything now compared to what I used to. But I'll enjoy classic Trek all the time. Like, I still throw in, you know, I'm still working my way through the classic TNG box set and stuff like that episode by episode. So, like, that kind of stuff I have no problem with. And, I, of course, I watched the movies when they came out in 4K recently and stuff like that. So, I still love classic Trek. But new stuff, I'm so glad you haven't made us watch any of the newer stuff. No, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you work hard enough as it is. Why would I punish you with that? I mean, you haven't really said anything about Season 4 since it's dropping in the next day or so or whatever. But, like, is there even any interest in it? I don't know. I... I had to be reminded that it even dropped now. Does anyone care? Or is everyone completely like, guys in the chat, let us know. Who here cares about Star Trek Discovery? Give Does us anyone a one in the chat to see us review it? Yeah, give us a one in the chat if you care. If you want to see yeah, us still if you want to it. see us review it, leave a one in the chat. There's like 600 of you here now. We can actually do polls now, Andre. I don't know if you realize that. Yeah, but I don't know how. It's not that hard. <laughs> no, I'm sure it isn't. You see down in the standard chat, there's a little poll looking thing. You just click yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll figure that. I'll figure that later. <laughs> we got a bunch of zeros, <laughs> and taking that's no's. We got one yeah. one. We got yeah, one well, F yeah, no. We got a no interest and an F no. So and I don't yeah. care. No, it's looking like a big no. Thank you guys. <laughs> so far, yeah. it's looking like you're saving my ass. Yeah, because you're the one that would have to watch it. I can't. I'm international. That's true. He doesn't want to do it. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, make it fake. You're busted, Andre. <laughs> it's because you've had enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Like I, th those last few episodes, oh my God, I was just suffering. We got a half. I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> uh, sorry, we got a saying. minus one from Mick and Jay, but yeah. Anyway, there's not much interested in Star Trek. We'll, we'll do a video on the current state of Star Trek for, for those that may care uh, to coincide with uh, with um, Season 4 coming out. Yeah. Master Clockwork will take in Spanish. No. 
Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> and then we got night nine. <laughs> yeah. In in four languages. In, yes. uh, in Russian, English, and binary. So yeah. And speaking of, we got Paulus playing here with another super chat. Thank you so much, buddy. It says people of the chat. Andre Anhanhar's Favreau's name is confusion. To be as <laughs> dyslexic. His name sounds German. <laughs> To me is Norwegian with love from Norway. <laughs> well, it, it, it is actually Norwegian, only uh, Norse. So I don't um, blame me for thinking it sounds German. I like how Joe <laughs> can start things here. I vote more sleep for Tom. You know what? Yeah, I like how I was thinking. No, um, we, should, we should do some of that now. I'm so pissed at Universal right now. <laughs> God. I mean, it's been years since I've seen Carlito's Way. I'm like, oh, I thought it was a longer movie than this, but I'm like, oh, well, it's 90 minutes. I'll knock that out real quick. <laughs> Boy, was I fucking wrong. <laughs> and I had to watch it because we have that shit today on <laughs> channels. I could not watch it. Oh, fuck. Oh, all right. Anyway, uh, that's pretty much it, kids. Uh Warashi sends in one more super chat though says leave Star Trek Discovery for Az to lose his mind over and Lord Doomcock to rant over. There I you like go. how you're thinking. I like how you're thinking exactly. Yeah. In this case, I don't see the sense in it. It's it's kind of way past its due. Um, Willie says I'd vote one if Andre did it. Oh uh, yeah, but you said that in the past never times, uh, yeah. so you didn't. <laughs> He's got you there, Willie. Uh, yeah, that uh, that vote has been rejected. And so with that, I think I'm going to let you guys go uh, so we can all head on over and see what's going on with Nick. I think we're all interested to see what's hanging on there. And uh, uh, yeah, I saw that copy. I'm not so pissed about that. <laughs> the movie looks great, though. There's the upside. The, the 4K Blu-ray looks magnificent. The movie still holds up after all these years. Um, but uh, <laughs> fucking runtime is wrong. <laughs> Well, as long as it's just on the cover and not the yeah, movie. it's just on the uh, cover. It was just like because, like, I'm looking at it like God. I could have swore this movie was a lot longer than this. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, well, uh, I'm not gonna argue. <laughs> and for the and for those that don't want to watch uh, want yeah. to watch um, the uh, the the uh, trial right now, Jesse's kid uh, is uh, streaming Ark Night. So yeah, if you anyone feels like rating that, then head on to the link in the description there and. And tell him we sent you. Tell him his dad's friend sent you. Absolutely. And with that, we're going to give y'all some koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. Koalas in the rain. No fuss given. Koala, koala. Koalas in the rain.